Welcome back to the National Pastime. I'm Nash. I'm Aaron. What, what, what what's that sound that we were trying to like drive? Is, that, is there a grizzly bear sleeping next door? <laughs> like, yeah. what is that? Is that is it's that the a cooling fan? fan? A fan in his computer. Is okay, yeah. making some growling. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's it's very it's growly. I think it's like because there's like four fans in there, so I just really need to get a new case. It's a huge computer. Yeah, that's yeah, that's another thing I would like to get. It's like the smaller size. It's like the Skynet mainframe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's much. freaking huge. I couldn't, when How I many reel to reel magnetic tapes do you have in there? A few. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, there's so many punch cards. <laughs> it's, it's, it calculates so many things. Do you introduce yourself yet? Uh huh. Okay, good. I blacked out there for a second. <laughs> welcome, welcome back. Uh, for for however long it's been. I see this poster note is still here. Have you researched podcast mediums? I, I did it. I was actually... I'll just... It's gonna be, do you want me to talk about it right now? Yeah, give, give it a lean in. And if I don't okay. like it, I'll just cut it out. Because <laughs> sometimes <laughs> okay. I can't hear you when you're... Uh, so... And, and you like, you'll say something really profound, but you'll be like far in the background. And I'm like, well, I'm not the sound guy. I can't be bothered <laughs> to make this better. And also, I don't know how. So, uh, there's a few places, but... Um, What's recommended is that you start with like iTunes and all those like okay. players okay. and stuff. Spotify too. I was reading that Spotify like they recently, and I say recently, as in a couple of years, have started doing podcasts. Yeah, like putting podcasts mm-hmm. on their um, thing, and but they're very selective. Uh, um, yep. However, they were saying that their criteria is like um, f- like they want to target millennials. Right. I feel that this is sort of millennial targeted yeah, exploration I, I feel, and stuff uh, like that and whatever. I feel very entitled. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And I too don't have a job or can't afford a house and feel <laughs> completely betrayed and abandoned by the previous generation. <laughs> so, yeah, this could, this could probably work, right? They also said uh, basically something like, they said either like tech or uh, what they called evergreen. Um, and So we're an environmentally friendly podcast? Yeah. Is that what well, that is? I, I think evergreen more in the sense that it's not we uh, don't, time. We don't die. Timely. Oh, right. So it's yeah. not, uh, you know, so talking not like about like, topical. oh, the current news or right. something. Right, yeah, that's uh, good. We are evergreen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's, and, there's nothing topical about our show. Well, Every now and then we talk about some current events. Yeah, well, they're, they're the current-ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're current-ish. Um, but, but, the, but, you know, the meat of the show yeah. is uh, stuff that's interesting to hear anytime. That's true, yeah. And the, like, final thing <laughs> that they had uh, was, like, storytelling kind of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think it... Uh, Stories, eh? I've heard of them. There's a good, you know, good yeah. chance that those... Checkboxes yeah. are all. Um, yeah, I feel like we meet those criteria. All there, but uh, yeah, submit to the other things, yeah. and we we could probably. Well, I mean, I guess I guess it's already on YouTube. That's already one three one. So I mean, I guess there's not really a point of submitting to the other fifty yeah. fucking free ones anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Plus, my buddy was telling me that it's it's a huge pain in the ass to like listen on YouTube because if you try to listen on your phone, mm. you just want to like you're like all right, I yeah, got it, and then you suck. like <laughs> your phone shuts off. Yeah. And you're like ugh. And yeah, no one's you can't lock gotta, the screen or anything. Exactly. I guess you can with, like, red. I know. Yeah, so you gotta yeah. buy that YouTube red. Stuff yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So, which, uh, yes, it's mostly on there as archival. Which yeah. I pay for since I listen to a lot of stuff at work. Yeah? Uh, oh, you just open a tab and... So, well, like, I run it on my phone. Oh, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, so, like, I pay for YouTube red just because, one, I hate ads. Yeah. And two, I use... If you pay a subscription for Red, you get, like, Google Play Music and YouTube Music. Oh, okay. Including that, and I actually really like the YouTube Music app. I don't... Yeah. Uh, I have no idea what those so are. I use that a lot. Uh, but yeah, the biggest thing for me was, like, being able to listen to keep listening with the screen off. Yeah. Uh, for a while, there were some workarounds, but then they, uh, they fixed that. That's what my buddy was saying. <laughs> so what have you been up to since the last time we recorded? Uh, I got into a minor car accident on Christmas Day. Was it because your taillights were burnt out? No. <laughs> <laughs> how well, how minor? Was there any injuries? No, no, no injuries. No one was injured. My my car, like, all it just got was, like, a little scuff on the uh, front bumper. Okay. But the uh, the other car I hit. <laughs> ah, so you hit a car. Yes. <laughs> were, you, were you texting? No. Were it you working just, on your uh, YouTube red? Driving on, driving on icy roads. Oh, icy roads, okay. Uh, going to my grandma's house for... Christmas, <laughs> uh, 
Grandma like, got ran in, over in by her neighborhood, car. like going to like turn right onto the street she lives on, and then there was another car uh, like waiting to turn left. Right. And just basically, like, I wasn't going fast, but like as soon as I started the turn, car just like slid, and uh, yeah, so like my left front bumper like hit right by their uh, like driver's side door. Uh, Interesting. But yeah, no, no one was hurt. <laughs> nice. Uh, my like, so my car didn't really get damaged at all. Their car like did it in the door. What's the uh, uh, what's the insurance situation or the the money situation? I don't Is that all like know. taken care of. Yeah, or? like I mean, my insurance paid for everything. Okay. Uh, I don't know what my premium is going to go up to because I had just renewed my policy like Aha, two you, weeks before. You got them. So it's not <laughs> going to change my premium until like six months. Right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it'll be maybe interesting to see how much it goes up. Maybe they'll forget about it by then. Well, like I, like I know I have Geico. I've had them for a long time. and I know they have like a accident forgiveness thing. So like basically if you haven't had any like tickets or any claims for right. so long period of time – if you have a claim filed against you, like, they won't, like, change your premium. Okay. And, uh, and I think that resets, like, every, like, six years or something. Uh, so this would be the first time I've ever had, a, like, an actual collision. Right. Uh, with this policy. So hopefully it's not going to change my premium at all. Uh, oh, man, that is some real life stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> what, what else have you been up to? Anything else? Uh, nothing super exciting. Been, uh... I said, it was house sitting at my parents' house for the last couple of weeks while they've been in Florida. And, uh, well, house sitting and dog sitting. Uh, so all my clothes are covered in dog hair now. Uh, <laughs> the way nature intended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was, yeah, I was telling Ben earlier that, like, old people like to get really soft beds. <laughs> uh and that does not work for my back. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to sleep on the ground or like uh, on a stone slab, or my my bones hurt. Yeah, so like I, I'd been sleeping on their bed, and like yeah, now my back's really sore. Uh, yeah, I I, I think we brought it before like I had had uh, spinal surgery uh, about about fifteen years ago. And, like, I have metal rods on my spine. <laughs> uh, so my back doesn't really bend. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, so I like a very firm <laughs> bed. Yeah, that's uh, how I am. I don't like my bones to start, like, gooping out of place. Yeah. Like, Ideally, if I could sleep on a slightly collapsed star, that would be the... <laughs> just, like, maybe four or five times Earth's natural gravitational force. Yeah. Get some good, slow blood moving sleep. That'd so, be yeah. nice. Like, like, usually if I go to hotels, like, it's the same thing there. Like, the beds are just, like, super soft. I never so sleep I usually just sleep beds. on the floor. I sleep on the floor, yeah. too! <laughs> when I'm in a hotel. Which is hardly ever. But, uh, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm in, like, a nice western hotel for some reason and I'm not paying for it. And I'm, and I'm not there with some attractive lady. Floor, all the way. And even mm. if I am there with some attractive lady, it's probably still the floor. So... <laughs> Beds are gross. Yeah, I know. What yeah, there's that like, too. The, I know what people like me doing those beds. <laughs> gross. I mean, like, if you go to like a good hotel, they usually like you know, the linens will be clean. Yeah, but the but deep the mattress, tissues, man, the mattress is disgusting. It really seals in the flavor. <laughs> You're looking at decades, maybe. Well, probably not decades. If it is a good hotel, they probably change their mattresses every couple of years. Maybe I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. Told you there was. I, I stumbled across this YouTube channel. Oh, man, I can't remember the name of is it, it now. Is it is it something but, cool uh, like Black Lights in Hotels? That's pretty much what it is. They, they go... What? So... <laughs> so much for the, that idea. The, the, the whole channel <laughs> is they find shitty hotels. I should get a job and on this channel. <laughs> the guy, like, the main guy who does this, like, he worked as a, uh, like, exterminator. Yeah. And, and also, like, as a, like, a... Uh, like superintendent for like, uh, like apartment complexes. So like he's just kind of like a you know a handyman, maintenance man kind of thing. Right. Uh, but yeah, like they go to all these shitty hotels, and then do like black light sweeps <laughs> and just like find all the like horrible things <laughs> wrong with it. <laughs> and like they use the like uh the, like spray stuff that like if it comes in contact with uh like organic matter, like right. blood or saliva. Yeah. And you shine a UV light on it, like it lights up. Yeah. Like they went into this one hotel and there was just blood everywhere. 
Uh, were like they sure, they, were like they you sure can't it was see, blood? Yes, because there were th- there were some areas where you could still actually see the blood, the blood. <laughs> but when they like sprayed the stuff all on there, like and there's just like splatters of it. Oh, there was like someone was like either killed in here <laughs> or like had the shit beat out of them in here because <laughs> there's like splatters like just on the turn wall. on the black light. It's like a tanning <laughs> booth. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but yeah, then tons tons of them that have you know of course bed bugs and. Yeah. Roaches, a uh, bunch that had uh, you know, leftover drug paraphernalia. Seen it all, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they have like a whole YouTube channel huh. of just devoted to I going should, to all these yeah, terrible I hotels. Should, I should see if I could, I could like get a guest spot on one, one of their <laughs> stuff. I've, I've, I've seen some stuff, man. In fact, I've been up to being in India and Nepal since the mm-hmm. last time we recorded. So we'll, we'll do this episode on India here. So. Uh, Right out of the gates. Don't want to set any, you know, false expectations. India is a garbage fire. That's why I've what a literal, a literal garbage fire. Most people who've been there. A literal <laughs> garbage fire. Just piles of garbage on fire, <laughs> raging. Like, and don't get me wrong, I mean, there's, there's plenty of nice people in nice places and, like, niceness to be had. But as, you know, as a foreigner... You're going to be assaulted as as someone who's not rich and a foreigner. <laughs> you're going to be assaulted with probably the worst that humanity has to offer. It's really really pretty intense, man. So uh, like, first off, uh, I think we talked about this right before I left. Right before I left, uh, Delhi had that uh, emergency medical uh, warning. I can't remember what it was called, but. Uh, because the the smog was like 30, 30 right, times right. greater than the tolerable dose, so they had to basically shut the city down because people were just smashing into each other because they couldn't see because the, the smog was so thick, like the air was un, unbreathable. Well, I landed in the Kolkata, and uh, way worse. So much worse. In fact, <laughs> I recommend... Kolkata is like... I'm, I'm telling you, I've never seen or experienced a worse place overall. I mean, there's... Sir, I've been to like, objectively worse places, like, through individual metrics that you might use to measure the, the, the terribleness of a place. <laughs> but if you take all of those and sort of, like, average them together, Kolkata's the worst, because we're talking, we're talking the garbage fires, like, they don't have anywhere to put their garbage, so they just throw it all on the ground, and so the streets are just paved in garbage, and, like, 60% of they have, like, I'm rounding up, I, I think they have, like, a billion and a half people in the mm. country. I'm going to round up to two. We'll say they have two billion people. Um, like, 60% of them are in, like, the most extreme form of poverty. Like, if you have, like, a like a piece of tin and a cloth to, like, drape over you, you're, you're in the upper crust of, of, like, the poverty. So a lot of them just, like, they live on the street and they sleep in the garbage and they poop on the street and they wash in the street and they wash their clothes in the street and then they take their poopy clothes and hang them up and make your food with their poopy washed water that's not drinkable and all that stuff going into the more water and then every so often they'll light all the garbage on fire and then there's just like animals and stuff and then these people that die in the streets so you're just like stepping over like dying people and dead animals and like duty and garbage fires like none of that's hyperbolic that's all that's all literal stuff and uh like when you put it in the context like that like, the amount of hassle that you get from people like beggars and pickpockets and, you know, thievery and stuff is actually quite low when you put it into perspective. Um, I mean, it's still high for a global standard, but when you factor in that, like, a lot of these people need to engage in illegal shenanigans in order to just barely scrape by, pretty, like, pretty high standard of, like, I don't want to say morals, but, like, a lack of overall depravity, I guess, like, put into that context. But still, it's still too high. Mm. Like, in general. (laughs) It's still something you definitely have to, like, be cognizant of. Oh, yeah. Like, let's (laughs) let's say that only, like, half of 1% of people are like that, right? So, if you're dealing with 2 million people, or 2 billion people... Yeah, that's still a shit ton. Yeah, so let's say (laughs) say half of them are in that poverty situation, so you're dealing with 1 billion people. So then you take, what's 1% of a billion? 10 million? 
So yeah. you go you go half of 1% of 50% of the population, you're still dealing with, you know, 5 million people <laughs> that will be the very bottom of the barrel of like stabbing you and taking your stuff and then doing whatever. Like that's still too many, too many people. In fact, to illustrate the too many people, so I was on a train. I was on a lot of trains. I met my buddy over there and we palled around for for a couple weeks backpacking around and stuff. And uh, just for funsies, I decided to count how many people, I was just gazing out the window of this train and I was like, you know what, in one hour's time, I'm going to see how many people I can see taking a fat shit in the street in public. In one hour, how many people do you think that was? Seven. So, so we got we, we got we got a guess for seven. Oh, I would think way higher. Uh, I don't know. 30, 40? 50. 50. 50 people <laughs> taking an unguarded shit in public, just right wherever they please, and not even like behind a bush or a building or, yeah, or like a bombed out husk just or anything. In the middle just of the street, just <laughs> where wherever, and like this wasn't just like like. 80 year old guys we're talking like <laughs> women children guys and uh so it's like come, come on come on guys like dogs don't even poop where they sleep typically <laughs> but uh yeah it's a vicious reciprocating diarrhea machine because you you blast your diarrhea on the ground but then you got to wash in that diarrhea and then make my food in that diarrhea so then theoretically i get the diarrhea then i have to poop in the street and it's it's a vicious it's a vicious cycle. That being said, Indian food is super delicious. Yeah. But, uh... I, I like mine with, uh, you know, as little poop matter as possible. <laughs> but, uh, well, then you're not getting the true experience. Yeah, that's I'm not getting authentic Indian that's food. That's right. Then. That's where half the flavor comes from, I think. <laughs> kind of like Cajun food. Like like, yeah. like Creole Cajun food is just dumpster juice. <laughs> but it's the most delicious dumpster juice you'll ever have. Just just uh, like, a, like a dead crawdad and like a... Like a soggy boot and oh some like, <laughs> like like some rice and some old sausage and spices. Delicious yeah. gumbo, yeah. Just yeah that, the, so that, that's what all the spices are, just to cover up the the bad taste yeah. of the uh, other rotting ingredients. Yeah, like I don't have a problem. You just got to know what you're getting into, or maybe don't. I don't know if you're squeamish, but it's good food. Don't let your don't let your weird mental hangups about eating poop and boots keep you away from like the best food. Like it's. <laughs> It's it's good stuff, but yeah, man. Like uh, India, what else is crazy? Oh yeah, um, India's got a reputation, deservedly so, of being full of scams. Like uh -huh. like everything's a scam. There were so many scams, and like hoodwinkery, it, it it does start to wear on you after a while. I I actually started to wonder if India itself was even a country, <laughs> or if that too was like part of this just, like elaborate ploy. Yeah, this like elaborate <laughs> long con. Like, wait a minute, this isn't even a real country. Like, is this the British still technically own this? What's going on here? But uh, it's just like an unincorporated municipality of somewhere. It's just like a big group of people. It's just it's a, like, yeah, it's come just to a our bunch country. of people yeah. living there. It's just come to our country. Like, oh, all right, this. Is, Vicious tourist dollars, like, wait a minute, this this isn't a country. But, uh, yeah, like, like the scams run so deep, and they're so elaborate that, like, you literally cannot trust anyone. Like, of course you never want to trust a taxi driver. Yeah. Or, uh, like a shop owner, or like a shop's tout. You don't want to talk to, you know, you don't want to trust them, because they're always going to tell you wrong. They're always going to be like, oh, yeah, don't get in their taxi, you got to get in my taxi. My taxi's the only one you can trust. Or, like, nah, their store's... Qual uh, their store is shitty, but my store is nothing but quality. Like, of course they're going to say that. But, like, you can't trust, like, if you go to a train station, you have, like, uniformed, like, guardsmen with badges and stuff at the, at the train station to, like, help people get to where they're going. You can't trust those guys. They're all fake. Like, that's not a real thing. Like, they look super legit. But the they're city not... doesn't hire them. They're yeah, just there. They're just there. Like, it's so crazy. If you didn't know... Like, it's so, like, they run so deep. Like, the scams run so deep. And they, yeah, there's technically laws there, but, like, none of the laws are enforced. <laughs> like, like someone was asking me if there's a strong police presence there, and I initially said yes, but I want to take that back. There's not a strong police presence there. There's a strong military presence, which is a different thing entirely. Yeah. Because cops and soldiers are not the same thing. So there's a lot of, like, soldiers around with, like, rifles slung over their shoulder, but they're not there to enforce the laws. Two billion people and, like, ten soldiers are not there to enforce the laws. That's too many people to, like, watch over. They're just there 
to guard against potential civil wars that are brewing. So, like, they're there to quell any rebellions, but outside of that, or terrorist attacks. They're yeah. really they're really concerned with like like Pakistan and stuff yeah. like that. Like, like to an almost comical degree, they are concerned with with Pakistan. Um, almost, almost comical degree. But uh, it's just right below that where it's like severely worrying, <laughs> kind of like certain elected officials in various countries. You're like, no, yeah. this would almost be funny if it weren't so dire. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, like, uh, like it's really weird, but you can tell which which soldiers are expected to like get into the sauce and which aren't, because like the ones at like minor train stations are just like, eh, whatever. Like they got a rifle slinger with a soldier. They know that terrorists aren't coming for their hole in the wall train station. But like the ones in front of the Parliament Building, <laughs> like they have much larger rifles and they're actually chained to their body. So that if one were so inclined, you couldn't just sneak up and kill them and take their rifle easily and start murdering everyone because it's chained to their body. So it would take much longer to, like, you know, saw that chain off or do whatever. And then the rest of the soldiers you didn't murder would be able to, to stop you. So, yeah, good, good, good situation. You can tell they're in much better shape, too. Like, some of them, you're just like, you're not, you're not stopping anything. Like, you're definitely not. Then you go to the parliament building and you're like, these guys, though. These guys <laughs> definitely are stopping probably everything. But uh, yeah, so it is a uh, social social upheaval and uh, terrorist attacks are not an impossibility in India. So that is that is a thing. Like and, and I read for a long time that like the Indian government, both basically at all levels, <laughs> national level and local level, is just extremely corrupt, rife with uh, corruption. <laughs> and that's just and the thing is like. Well, as the far thing as, like, is, bribes like, and things like that, like, yeah. that's just considered doing business. That's just yes. normal. Yes, yeah. Like, they is. don't really think it's wrong. Because the <laughs> word the word for, like, tip, gratuity, bribe, and fine is all the same word. It's just like, oh, you did such a good job. Like, here's your tip. Or, like, you could think of, like, it's all this, it's bakshish. It's all the same. So it's just like, here's your, like, bribe to not spit in my food the next time I come here. Like, yeah. thanks for <laughs> not... Treating me terribly. Here's here's your or, bribe like you, or uh, tip. You know, whatever. Like, uh, or, like, if, you, if you got, you know, in a confrontation with law enforcement, that uh, yeah, you, you just say, oh, I'd be happy. happy to, is there a fine? I'll yeah. pay a fine. Yeah, I would be happy to pay the fine to get out of here. <laughs> and the fine is a bribe. That's what it is. It's not a fine that like goes to the city. <laughs> yeah, it does it's not a fine go that goes city. to that dude. Yeah, who, yeah, who's yeah it just you. goes to the guy. <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you. On the one hand, yeah, rife with corruption. But on the other hand, probably all governments are. They're just extremely transparent about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that actually is both worrying and liberating if you are not from India or you're rich and from India. Because you get to basically do whatever you want all the time. And I was walking around in Calcutta before my buddy got there. So I was supposed to meet him. I was getting there, like, like three or four days before he was. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to, like, chill out here, you know. Just kind of take, take in the vibes. And then when he gets here, we'll go see all the sights. And then we'll start traveling around India. And uh, after one day, I was like, nope, I'm going to see everything there is to do here. And then I'm going to, like, barricade myself in somewhere. And when he gets here, we are getting the hell out of Calcutta. Like, this place is a nightmare. Um, but, uh, yeah, I actually wound up getting together with this uh, native Bengali guy. Um, whose dad was supposedly eaten by a Bengal tiger when he was really young. But uh, he was a rickshaw driver, and he wanted me to, like, hire him as a rickshaw driver. And I was like, of course I'm not going to do that, one, because I don't spend any money when I don't have to. And two, I like to walk. It's a thing I enjoy to do. So I'm not going to hire you to take away the thing I like to do while doing a thing I don't like to do, which is spend money and have to talk to people. But we actually got to talking, and he was pretty cool. And so we just wound up like hanging out for a couple days, and he was like taking me to all these all these places, like not on his rickshaw. We would just walk around, and uh, I felt kind of bad for him for half a second because he was like, "Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't make any money today. Just hanging out with you all day." Like, yeah, it's pretty rough. You don't have to do that though. You know, choices, consequences. <laughs> yes. Well, that was kind of your decision. <laughs> yeah, that's your thing. That's what happens when you hang out with someone instead of working. But uh, but on the other hand, like. The U.S. dollar to rupee conversion is insane. Yeah. So, like, we would be out and about, and he's like, hey, why don't I buy you lunch? Why don't I buy you, like, uh, he's kind of eyeballing this, like, little bracelet thing. Like, one of these dudes was like, oh, I'll get you a name on a, a grain of rice. I'll write it on a grain of rice and make a bracelet out of it. And he's, like, eyeballing one of those. And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I bought him, bought him this bracelet and lunch. 
and like beers and some other stuff. And the grand total was like like a dollar fifty <laughs> U.S. for like doing all this stuff. And uh, so we were like going to these museums and stuff. But he was like sneaking me in the back way, so we didn't have to wait in any lines or anything. And uh, just just really cool, like legit, real, like real India, not tourist India stuff. Like we went to the park, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, you see how." Like, around here, there's, like, a periphery of, of trees and stuff. And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, that actually used to be jungle, like, a year ago. But ladies kept getting raped and then murdered. So the government came in and just burned it all down <laughs> so that the, the murder rapes didn't have anywhere to happen that, like, wasn't in public. And I was like, oh, my. Like, that's probably, that's not, like, a thing that the tourism board wants everyone to know about. Let's publicize. Yeah. <laughs> like, this park is the murder rape capital. But, uh, yeah, uh, that was pretty crazy. And then uh, we went to this Kali temple where I went through, like, an actual, like, real Kali ritual, which was pretty cool because um, I, I never would have been able to navigate that without him there. Um, so that was pretty cool. And as a bonus, uh, the animal sacrifices that they do there actually become food for the homeless. So I was <laughs> like, well, if you're gonna, you may as well... <laughs> Yeah. Eat them. Like, right? Like, that's a good thing. You have, like, a billion homeless people. Like, that's that's pretty cool that uh, that the food, that the, the, the dead animals become food for the homeless. Like, that's pretty rad. Um, and then we uh, we hopped some trains that, of course, we didn't pay for. And then we rode out outside of the city. We we're, like, walking around. We, uh, like, hiked on these train tracks. And uh, there was a shanty town, like, built on the train tracks. And twice a day... Everyone has to get up and move their shanty town, or they will all be run over by trains. Yeah, like so like crazy. I, well, and you bring it up, like I actually saw that on a like one of the Anthony Bourdain travel shows. The, yeah, that yeah, it's basically a, a train that travels like through the middle of this shanty town. Yeah, and, like and like this, they didn't they didn't have to like you know deconstruct buildings, but it's basically like all like the like cards and like awnings, like basically all like had to like pull like inward yeah. so the train could pass through yeah uh, and these trains i mean there's like there's no enforced laws so like they don't care if they run over yeah. like like 300 <laughs> people which I, you kind of get if there's like 200 people around that aren't contributing to the upper crust of society then they're like who cares you're replaceable you're nobody like you're not doing you just drive right through you and it's really depressing too because the shanty town was like in the shadow of like, brand new, like, mm. skyscraper apartment <laughs> buildings. So, like, you could, like, look out and be like, aha, look at all those dying people on my lawn. Like, yeah, well, it's, it's like, like, I've never been to a place where the distribution of wealth was, like, so on More display. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, so on display. Like, the inequality was on display. Like, it was, like, the goal to be as unequal as possible and like uh, like like technically the caste system is illegal oh, yeah. it's illegal but it still very much exists it still very <laughs> much exists like discrimination is like out and about in full force and that's kind of what the bengali guy was saying he was like yeah man like you know people always talk about like america as the land of the free but this place this is true freedom like you can do whatever you want and, like, no one is going to say anything. Like, you could pee anywhere. You can <laughs> take anything. It's like, you could you could just do whatever. And I'm like, yeah. Like, India gave me a really serious, and I'm still, like, grappling with the effects of being in India for, like, a month. And, like, seeing real India. Because I was telling this to one of my buddies. He's like, I was in India for a while. I thought it was pretty nice. I was like, you weren't in the India I was in. I was in a different <laughs> India, money bags. But, like... Yeah, like, like, true freedom at what cost? Like, is true freedom even something? Because I'm like Captain Freedom. I used to be like, government bad, boo! Like, everyone should just do whatever. And now I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if people <laughs> deserve it's, to be free. It's complete anarchy is it really is, the best like, way. <laughs> like, yeah, well, like, in my mind, because you're always like, and this is the greatest mistake intelligent people make, is assuming everyone else is yeah, intelligent. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it works as long as everyone else is, like, you know, at least still considerate. Exactly. That's the thing. When <laughs> two billion selfish people do whatever they want at exactly the same time, like, you know, I'm like, boo, government. But I like paved roads sometimes. They don't all have to be <laughs> paved, but, like, how about one paved road? What about a toilet that, like, works? Like, that's cool, right? Like, I like to not... I like air that I can breathe in and, like, see through. And, yeah. <laughs> like, 
And you can't get that if people are just like, whatever we want to do is what we want to do all the time. Murder rapes. <laughs> like, murder rape train. Like, like, it's fine. Like, true freedom is fine. But if you can, like, monitor yourself. But then, or, like, be considerate. But if you're having to be considerate and you're having to monitor yourself, is that even freedom anymore? You're still policed, but it's just a self-police. Yeah. That, well, I mean... It, it, I like, think, like, in the te- most technical sense, since it's self-policing, it's you still, are making that decision yes, yourself. You so are, yes. I would say, yes, it's still freedom. Yeah. With, you know, self-imposed limitations. Self-imposed limitations. Yeah, but then people would say that, that self-imposed limitations are not true freedom. Well, I would say <laughs> that then they're imposing a limitation on me. <laughs> <laughs> they're saying I cannot self-impose limitations. They're saying you can. They're putting a restriction on me. <laughs> they're saying you can you can impose limitations because <laughs> you're free to do so. But then if you do, then you're not like embracing everything that you could be. Like you could just be oh, like... Oh, sure. Not everything I could be, but maybe yeah. I don't want to embrace That's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Exactly. Like I don't need to be ferociously masturbating while I'm car <laughs> like car thieving someone's car and driving it into a building because I want to steal their TV or whatever like it's yeah. <laughs> like I don't know like yeah it's just that was that was existential crisis number one that was pretty crazy and then so he and I are like hiking around me and this Bengali guy and then we hike to his village um which was really cool because uh, he was like oh yeah I want you to meet like my sister and my mom and we'll like hang out and stuff and I was like yeah that's cool and so we went but they were like out of town doing or out of village doing something um so i got to go to their like kali worshiping shack which is like uh like a little building much probably like i don't know one eighth the size of this room where like maybe like five to ten people would get in like all huddled together and they'd smoke a bunch of uh condensed weed but it's like a special weed it's not um it's not it's not hash it's not hashish Something else, but it's similar. But they use it for religious ceremonies. So they get in there, and then they just chill out. And li- or, I'm sorry, it wasn't Kali, it was Shiva. So they just get in there, and they chill out in front of the Shiva idol, and they listen for the voice of Shiva to, like, you know, drop some knowledge bombs on them or whatever. And that was pretty cool to be in there. And then uh, there's, like, a bunch of little kids in there in the village, not in the weed-smoking room. And, uh, like, every time he rolls by, he buys them all, like, little pieces of chocolate. So we, we got him chocolate because I was like, ugh. Now I gotta spend my money on some kids in a village. But, like, I didn't have to. He bought them chocolate, and I just, like, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll buy this guy a bracelet later or something like that. Like, fine. <laughs> fine. Plus, you, you earned my nickel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was the other thing. I was like, yeah, I'm poor, but, like, I'm not, like, I can I can spend 14 cents on an entire village's worth of chocolate. Like, it's fine. Like, I would be an <laughs> asshole. And they're like, seeing me was, like, the coolest thing that had ever happened in their lives, too. Because, uh, like... I was a non-Indian guy. Yeah. Like, and, and it, like, blew their mind. And apparently, this is a thing that happened, like, the entire month I was in India. Um, and when I went to Nepal, it was, like, a non-issue. But when I was in India, anytime I went anywhere, people were like, excuse me, my friend, my friend, can I take a selfie with you? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you can. This happened all the time. Like, like, so big... They could tell their friends they met Brad Pitt. Pretty <laughs> much, <laughs> yeah. They're like, my friend. You see, I know Kid Rock. He is my friend. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was wearing a, I was wearing a sweet, I was wearing the, this sweet ass hat that I like to wear and these sunglasses. This guy was like, you kind of look like Kid Rock. I was like, oh, that's super depressing because I actually see that now because of the hair. <laughs> the hair and the hat and the glasses all at the same time make me kind of look like Kid Rock. And I was like, well, got to cut all this hair and burn these clothes now. So, but, uh. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, and then when my buddy got to town, like, us together, I think it was mostly just me, but, like, vicariously also he would get roped into getting pictures taken, but, like, big groups of people would be like, oh, yeah, let's all take a picture with these two guys, <laughs> and, like, singular people, women, children, old people, people that were on, like, a monk's pilgrimage, there was one day, and, like, anywhere, like, I went to the museum, and I was like, I'm just gonna look at all these artifacts and stuff. And these people at the museum were like, excuse me, can I uh, take a selfie with you? Because you're the coolest thing ever. <laughs> like, all right. But I was so suspicious, like, the first couple of days, because I was like... They're just doing, they're trying to pickpocket me. Well, That's I was like, at first I was like, I, at first I was like, classic, classic pickpocketing move. Like, they're gonna put their arms around, they're gonna take a yeah. selfie, and then when I'm not looking, one of them's gonna pick my pocket. Now that wasn't it. And I was like, okay, maybe this is... They think I'm someone famous 
they're just like, confusing me with like I don't know who I would look like um Mickey Rourke or like <laughs> someone someone not flattering at all um I'm like I'm like do they think I'm famous and I'm like now they clearly know that I'm not famous and I'm like, is this part of an elaborate long con that, like, in a couple months, like, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, my, like, I'm, like, watching the news. I'm like, this man bombed the Pakistani embassy. I'm like, wait, that's me. I didn't do that. But, uh, yeah, I really, truly think that these people were just super psyched to take their picture with me. Um, and then me and my buddy. And we were like, well, this, is a, this must just be a thing that, like, anytime these people see someone who's clearly foreign, uh... But, you know, it must just be, like, a cool thing to do. Like, uh, you probably don't... Because we were also, like, we went to touristy areas, but we also went to, like, non-touristy areas. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you would expect, like, if you went to this frequently touristed beach, like, probably not a big deal. But if you went to, like, a tiny little village, like, whoa, a foreigner, like, it's crazy. But then we were at, like, we'd be at, like, ancient archaeological sites, and there would be, like, a couple other foreigners, and those people were not getting their pictures taken at all. And we were getting swarmed all the time. There was one day we got like 25 groups of people <laughs> taking pictures with us. Yeah, and I never turned them down too because I, cause I was like, well, I feel kind of special. Like I enjoy the yeah. attention. Even though it's like a, it's a huge hassle because like, I'm like, oh God, I'm just trying like, I'm like, I'm just trying to cross the street. Yeah, it's like a 10,000 year old <laughs> monument that like 20 generations of monks carved with spoons. They, like, built an entire temple out of a mountain by carving it away with, like, chopsticks. But then they're like, whoa, a foreign guy! Let's get our picture taken with this guy. Like, there are there are larger, more interesting things here, sir. But, yes, of course, I will take my picture with you. But, uh, yeah, so it was kind of a burden in that way. But it was also, like, I enjoyed the attention. It's like, well, who am I to deny these people if they truly do think I'm super rad? And then I finally got the full paparazzi experience when we, uh, me and my buddy went to this restaurant in quotes i mean that we we hardly went to any actual restaurants because they cost stall. money yeah <laughs> i mean like one step above food stall but probably several steps below what most people in the west would consider a restaurant but whatever we're at this restaurant and uh i went to go take a fat poop in their fat poop room and when I came out, the staff at the restaurant was like, can we take a picture with you? And you're like the coolest guy. I'm like, yeah, I just uh, ruined your facilities. Let's do it. And then later on, uh, while I'm eating, a different group of staff interrupted my meal. Like I was like mid-chew and they're like, hey, can you like stand up and leave your food so you can take pictures with us? And I was like, of course I will. <laughs> But uh, it's like, the, the, this is it. I did it. I've arrived. Like the, 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 you must, yeah, there's got to be something where they think that you look like someone famous. I yeah. don't think so, though. <laughs> like, I kept asking them, and they they, they, they were like, yeah, you just seem like a really cool dude. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm super rad, but why the attention? <laughs> like, I'm still very confused. You know, well, also, you, uh, I mean, if just like the typical American tours there. Yeah, they, you know, they look like me or whatever. I mean, you're yeah. very built. And they talked yeah. about that all the time. Yeah. Like you that was stand out. That's like, that was an average looking. I'm American. not an average looking American guy. Yeah, I'm not an average looking person. I've found out <laughs> at all. But anytime I try to buy clothes, they're not made for me. Like I have no clothes fit. <laughs> I, I either look like a child in adult's clothes <laughs> or an adult in child's clothes. Those are the only two <laughs> options. <laughs> it's, either, it's either way too loose or way too tight. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But yeah, so they would always come up to me, and that was their icebreaker, was commenting on my like extraordinary physique. But what was hilarious, and this took me weeks to finally understand, um, they frequently mix up the words, the word for physique they mix up with personality. So, like, they would be like, my friend, your personality is incredible. And I was like, yes, I am, like, the like I'm a, I'm a catch, man. Like, you should hear me tell some jokes. Like, I got a great personality, very likable. They're like, how do you get such a good personality? I'm like, ah, oh, just, you know, just being a cool dude, you know, just playing it forward. Just, uh... Like, so I'm sure you confused a lot of people. I there. did, yeah. And then, yeah, but then finally, like... The, it went on for, for weeks, and I was like, wait a minute, because they'd be like, my friend, you have such an incredible, thick, vascular personality. <laughs> no one in India has this personality. I'm like, wait a minute. They must be talking about something other than personality. Like, my friend, you're a huge, throbbing personality. We do not see this much in India. 
What an incredible personality you have, sir. How 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 do you get such a personality? That's a really good one. Yeah, I was like, um. And then, like, so I, I didn't want to just be like, martial arts is what I do, because that's, like, you know, going to invite some trouble, um, which I was trying to avoid at the time. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, I just, you know, they're like, oh, you must go to the gym all the time. I was like, no, I never go to the gym, man. I just do, like, you know, just walk around, a jog. I do, like, rock climbing. And then uh, after a few weeks, me and my buddy were on the beach, and this dude just, like, freaking was not having it. He's like, how do you get such an incredible personality? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I do, uh, I do, you know, just, like, Regular body weight stuff like yoga, and he's like, "My friend, my friend, yoga comes from here. Yeah. <laughs> if yoga gave you this personality, we would all have your personality. You, do, this is not, you do not get like this from doing yoga, or everyone would look like you. Not true. What do you do?" And I was finally like, "All right, fine. I do martial arts. Like I do like karate and stuff. Like that's what this is from." And he's like, "No, sir. Do, uh, what is the real way that you get this personality?" And I was like, "That is the real way." And uh, yeah, he just he just would not believe that. Like you know. He's like, you must go to the gym all the time. And I was like, no, I really don't. And he, then he just wasn't having it. And I was like, and my buddy was like, yeah, well, you know, like, you're always doing, like, push-ups and squats and pull-ups and stuff. And I was like, that's part of my martial arts training, though. Like, I told him <laughs> climbing and, like, running and martial arts, like, it's all, uh, like, I don't, like, lift weights or anything. And, uh, you know, it's it's very yoga-like, you know, like, body weight holding postures and mm. stuff. And he just, he just wasn't having it. Um yeah, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty funny. He's just like, I was like, yeah, you hear that? I got the best personality. <laughs> like, I'm the best. Well, like, see, like, you, obviously, yeah, you are very fit, uh, but still, like, you don't look like bodybuilder. Exactly, and that's like, the thing. I was like, because I was like, well, clearly, like, if if like, because like, if my, you're just doing like body weight training, like, yeah, you can get super cut, and you, and that's like, yeah, how you look. pretty, like, I'm like I'm uh, bulky for a body weight guy, but I'm yeah. nothing compared to like an actual weightlifter. <laughs> and that's what I started thinking. I was like, man, if like my buddy who is an actual bodybuilder like came onto this beach, they would all just explode. <laughs> like they would all like their heads would just explode. They'd be like, what? <laughs> like, because I was just like, oh, you think this is something? Like I'm like. Five foot nine and like 180 pounds of like body weight martial arts training. Like, go see my buddy who's like six and a half feet tall and just rippled. Like, you, you all would just flip inside out. But uh, yeah, they, they were amazed at like just the most ridiculous stuff. Like, me and my buddy were doing handstands on the beach, and then we had like in no time, we had a like a circle around us of, of just people staring and looking at us. Like, I don't know, 20, 25 people like just staring around us, like, want to take pictures and. Asking us, like, why we were so rad. Like, well, you know, we uh, don't live here, unfortunately, is the <laughs> real answer. Like, we've been afforded opportunities so we can, like, go practice our handstands and not have to worry about, like, dying in the street or going to work for 18 hours a day and then jumping out a window to kill ourselves. But, uh, like, even the people who do have a lot of money, like, we met this one guy. When we were waiting to leave Calcutta, we are at the train station. The first train station... Okay, so, some bad... Let me just back it up. So many... So many anecdotes. Anyway, so you've probably gathered I don't much care for Calcutta. I recommend everyone go, because it is the worst. <laughs> Once you leave Calcutta, wherever it is you're going will be the best place you've ever been. Like, it's so nice to leave Calcutta. But, um, so, my buddy was there for a day and a half. Uh, we, we went to the mall that's there in downtown Calcutta. Quote, quote unquote, downtown Calcutta. Hilariously next to a Trump Tower, by the way. <laughs> um, but the mall, the Quest Mall, it, I mean, like, we had to, like, walk around and, like, over, like, beggars and, like, people laying in the street and whatever. You get into the mall, there's, like, a line to get in, like, a nightclub and, like, a bouncer dude, like, making sure you're dressed properly, like, making sure you look like you've got some money. Like, no one's coming in if, if they're, if they're Indian, they're not coming in unless they're rich. And if they're foreign, they better be, like, light-skinned or dressed well. And, uh, so then we, we get bumped to the front of the line cause like my buddy's super white and like normally it'd be no flip flops. I'm wearing flip flops, but they let us in cause we're foreign. So like we get in and then there's like another checkpoint of like checking bags and stuff like that. Like no bags are coming in there. Um, but we didn't have our bags with us. So we just walked on in, we get in and it's like marble floors, like actual marble, like a multi-tiered mall with like Gucci stores and like, it's like, we had no business being in there. Mm. Like, we didn't have the money to be in there. We just happened to be foreign. So they let us <laughs> in. But, like, it was just the glitziest place. But, like, the the inequality of wealth was staggering. Because we had to, like, 
to navigate around these people to get in. And then once you're in, you're like, wow, like all of this exists in a ghetto. Like it's crazy how nice it was. It was like five floors, I think. And then up at the top is another checkpoint to get into this Irish pub where everything is like made out of tree trunks, including the menu. It was like, it was like Valhalla. <laughs> like you're just like, Rah! bring me a cask of wine. Like it was crazy. Like the tables were tree trunks and the menu was tree trunks. Tree trunks everywhere. And uh, we caught happy hours. We had a couple drinks and we were like, let's see what else is around downtown. And we left the mall. We, we took like, we went like half a street down. We're like, oh, it's the ghetto. The ghetto's <laughs> everywhere. That's that's what's around here. That makes sense. But uh, we did wander into a Nepali wedding that was happening, uh, which was pretty cool because it's just like dancing in the street. Like everybody's dancing and playing music and stuff. And we're like, whoa. And even the Indian people were like, yeah, fun, <laughs> fun and sounds. Like it was, it was pretty cool that it was a Nepali wedding. But anyway. That was his one night in Calcutta. And he was like, dude, I've had enough of this place. Like, we got to get out of here. I was like, I've already been here for like a week. Like, let's <laughs> leave. So the next day we went to the, uh, they have a, they have an office for like buying train tickets, but then they have a special office for buying train tickets if you're a foreigner. Uh, only in like Calcutta and Delhi and Mumbai, I think they have these offices, but they're, they're basically like foreigner babysitting offices. And they're not just for like Western foreigners or for like all foreigners. Like if, you know, someone from... Nepal or some something there too. There's so many languages spoken in India. Like no, if you go one state over, because they're broken into states. If you go one state in any direction, no one can understand anybody unless they're like quadlingual. Like it's crazy how many languages are spoken there. Well, it's not crazy, but I mean it's it's, it's impressive how many languages are spoken there. Um, but English is somewhat of a common language. Um, so we go to the foreigner babysitting office. And we're like, oh, we would like to get tickets out of Calcutta, please. And the lady's like, yeah, but everything is sold out. When are you, when are you trying to leave? And they're like, I was like, ah, uh, now? Like, today? And she was like, yeah, no way, man. Like, everything is everything's booked up. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I've got to get out of here. And I was like, whatever. Whatever is available. Like, we got to get out of here. And she's like, well, we do have two train tickets on a sleeper train. Leaving tonight. I could sell those to you. I was like... Are you telling me there's a train where I could, like, lay down and go to sleep and get out of here? And that sounds like, amazing. Yeah, I was like, this sounds like everything I want. Let's do it. And uh, she looked at me and my buddy like we had made a terrible error in judgment. But I was like, no way. Like, you just described an amazing thing. Uh, so we got these tickets. So we get to the train station. However bad Calcutta, however bad I made Calcutta seem, this train station was, like, exponentially worse. Like, the air is worse. There's more poopy people and just like worse just everything everything's worse and uh so they do have a toilet at the train station though with like stalls in it you gotta pay to get in um but you know i get you know you, you wanna you wanna maintain a nice atmosphere which the train station was not a nice atmosphere so i was like <laughs> well i have to poop so i'm going into this toilet so i go into the toilet and it was the worst like there were various like you know like stalls like cubicles where you would go and have a poop, and uh, they were actual toilets. They were the it's not just like a squat pit. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a squat pit, but it was a porcelain squat pit. Okay. Um, so you know, a proper Asian style toilet. But hey, yeah, that's, that's great. I prefer the Asian toilets actually because you don't have to touch anything, and it's more conducive to your body's natural alignment mm -hmm. of making poop. Anyway, you get a you get a much more thorough poop. And so I was like, yeah, this is great. But the lines were crazy long. So there was like I don't know, like five stalls for the toilet and then behind the stalls was like a wall of urinals and then next to the stalls was like three or four other cubicles that were like bathing cubicles so they're just basically like a toilet uh like a toilet stall but without a toilet in it and uh also i don't know if i mentioned this i don't know if you're familiar sound guy ben with the uh the the, the modus operandi of uh indian toilets similar to turkish toilets so they're like a hole in the ground and then there's a bucket of water next to that. And so you poop, and then you wipe yourself with the bucket of water and your hand, your left oh. hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had forgotten how much I didn't enjoy that. So <laughs> the first couple of days I'm in Calcutta, I was like, that's right. I forgot that I really don't like wiping my butt with my hand in a cup of water. Yeah. And, uh... Oh, and the, like, so the, I'm assuming that's like a communal bucket of water? Yeah. So they're just like rinsing their fucking shit hand in the bucket of water? No, no, no. You, you rinse your butt with the bucket, but as you're pouring the bucket into your butt, you like scrub your butt with your hand. 
and then you like pour the rest of the water on your hand, and then you refill the bucket from the tap. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, it's not, mean, so it's, it's not like it's not like a it's not it's not a it's not a bucket full of poop that you're like, <laughs> <laughs> but it almost is because the water from the tap is yeah. not drinkable. It's yeah. not. It's really not even touchable by most standards. But it's it's it it is above poopy grade, like you're describing. It is. It is theoretically non-communal, but when you see the rivers that the water comes from, it's absolutely the same water you're flushing down the toilet. Plus, it, does, it doesn't matter anyway, because everyone's just shitting wherever they want. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the bathing stalls, I, like, walked by them, and people were just taking fat shits in the, the bathing cubicles because they didn't want to wait in line for the toilets. It's just, like, piles of duty on the ground. And I, the smell was incredible. Like, I was just like, man, why am I even waiting in line when I could just shit wherever I want? <laughs> and then this guy walks in. He just trots on in, this Indian guy, walks in, goes to the urinal, pulls out his penis, and then immediately starts projectile vomiting onto his penis. <laughs> and this guy, he's just like, just looks at his wiener and is like, <laughs> and this, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god. And uh, so I was just like, Jesus, like, did he know that was going to happen? Was this, the, was this the goal or was this a surprise? <laughs> And then he takes a breath and it's like it goes again and this goes on for like 10 minutes oh, like it's just like <laughs> like like vomit is going everywhere he's clogging up the urinal he's like getting it on the floor it's all over his wiener he's, st- he's just holding his wiener looking at it projectile vomiting on it for like 10 minutes and the smell just keeps getting worse and I was like is this my in-flight entertainment for this long line for the toilet and I was I finally bailed I was like this isn't worth it like I'm I'm out of here so I left I left the- I left the toilet, and I'll go, uh, I'll go shit in the street like everyone else. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so me and my buddy are waiting at the train station for hours for this train to get there, and the air is so bad. Like we're like, are the trains coal powered? Are the passengers coal powered? Where's all this this coming from? Like it's just it's just a coal and garbage powered train. Just everyone shoveling bodies and garbage and poop into the <laughs> freaking train. Like it's so smoggy, and uh, so we're sitting there and we're just having this, like, cathartic bitching session about Kolkata and how terrible it is for a while. And then, like, we we take a breath to, like, get ready for more Kolkata ripping. And then this Indian guy sitting next to me leans over and he's like, So, you guys didn't enjoy Calcutta, huh? (laughs) Like, oh yeah, some people speak English. It's not that we didn't enjoy it. Let me just backpedal for a second. It's just that, uh, you know, you gotta know what you're getting into. It wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah, it was kind of what I was expecting, but it was... You know, I was like, like, yeah, I definitely recommend people come here. They just gotta know what they're getting into. That's all. And he's like, yeah, I don't really like it here. Like, I'm from... He's a computer programmer, like a high-level computer programmer, but he works, like, seven days a week and for, like, 12 hours a day. He's like, yeah, I have all kinds of money that I can't use. Like, what's the point of anything? And I was like, yeah, I try not to work. And then we were, like, talking about my life. And he's like, yeah, you're doing it right, but you should probably have some kind of a savings because you're going to get old one day. And I'm like, probably not. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I get what you're saying. He's like, yeah, maybe some kind of middle ground. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's not bad. But, yeah, let me backpedal to... Uh, when I first showed up to Calcutta, um, I got off the plane, left the airport, was immediately assaulted by, like, taxi drivers and stuff, and they're like, oh, where are you going, where are you going? I was like, get out of my face, I'm going to the bus, I'm taking this bus to where I want to stay. And they're like, the buses aren't running right now, and I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, of course you're going to say that, because you're a liar, everyone's a liar, <laughs> going to the buses. And they're like, no, no, the bus to the place you want to go is not, not, not running. And I was like, well, I'll find a different bus, get out of my face. So, I go to the bus station, and, uh... Fully unprepared to navigate the intricacies of the Calcutta public bus system, because uh, nobody did speak English, and I don't speak any of the languages that they were working with. And uh, but I did communicate where I was trying to go, and this guy like put me on a bus, um, but it didn't. The bus to where I wanted to go actually was not running at the time because it was like midnight, and so they dropped me somewhere at like one in the morning and I had my compass out and a map and I was just like walking through the shadiest parts of Calcutta at like 1 30 in the morning till I got to where I was going and uh it was totally booked so I couldn't stay there and so the the Bengali guy that from earlier that was taking me around this is where we met because he was awake and walking around 
And he's like, hey, you, and he spoke English, and he's like, hey, you looking for a place to stay? And I was like, yeah, he's like, let me help you out. So he takes me to another place I was trying to go, it was booked. Another place I was trying to go, it was booked. So basically he was just like, yeah, everywhere's booked, but like we can just wander around and like try to find you some place. And I was like, yeah, sure, that's cool, because I would like a place. And so we did find a place, and it was a shithole. It uh, was super small. It was probably about the size of your bathroom. It did have a bed in it, like a bed-ish thing. <laughs> it was uh, like like the frame of a bed, but with like wooden planks on it, and then like stained-ass blankets on top of those wooden planks. And uh, it did have a toilet, like a western toilet, um, so like a porcelain bowl. But when you flushed it, it just emptied all its contents out onto the floor. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's just like, like I took a fat, transity poop into this toilet, and then I was like, flush, splash! And I was like, alright, well I filled this room up with my own poop, so off to bed! <laughs> like, and, uh, yeah, and uh, it came pre, you know, thoughtfully pre-stocked with, uh, it had like a tiny little dresser in it that was full of construction debris from the room because the room was clearly <laughs> under construction so it was just like broken wall trim other people's garbage like trash and stuff they hadn't bothered to throw away uh tons of bugs and then there was a, a really rickety ceiling fan that like if you turned it on like it was definitely for killing yourself <laughs> so like if, if calcutta ever got too much you could always just go back to your room and kill yourself with the ceiling fan and uh yeah, so in the morning, like, I woke up and I had to shake all the bugs out of my pants and then, like, put them on. And I was like, time to start a fresh new day! <laughs> and uh, so I went out, and item one was to find a better place to stay. So I went out canvassing everywhere. And uh, when I came back, the guy was like, hey, you know, if you stay here, if you continue to stay here, we'll, uh, we'll give you a better room. And I was like, well, I'm going to need a better room for the same price if you want me to stay here. And he's like, yeah, we could probably manage. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, though. I'm still, like, looking around. And he's like, oh, we'll give you our best room. We'll give you the suite at the same <laughs> price if you stay here. And I was like, I'll think about it. And he's like, we'll go clear it out right now. And Because uh, the, the whole culture, and this benefits me, it's all NFP, no fixed price. Yeah. So like, you can bargain and barter for everything, which is how I got this new bell buckle. But uh, you can bargain and barter for everything. So I'm really good at navigating that situation, like that sort of landscape I'm really good at. So I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'm playing hardball. What this guy doesn't know is that I've spent all day canvassing around for a better place to stay, and there weren't any. They were all booked up. But I was pretending, like, because I, I definitely wanted to leave, but I couldn't. I was stuck there. And uh, so I did wind up getting the suite, which was exactly the same as the previous room, but bigger. But it did have a toilet that flushed out of the room. I don't know where it went. <laughs> Probably to the room I was just staying in. <laughs> but, but it left my room, which was all I cared about. And uh, it did have a shower spigot in the wall and a sink. But every time I tried to use those items, nothing came out. So the, the room would like spontaneously lose water for like hours at a time. So like I never knew when I could or couldn't flush the toilet. And like I never got the sink or the shower to work. So sometimes I just go to the bathroom and try to flush and nothing would happen. I'd be like, oh, I'll come back in a few hours and try to flush that. Then we'll see what's happening. Uh, oh, it had a door, uh, which was nice. Uh, but the door was just two wooden planks nailed together with some of the trim from the walls, like the, the, the baseboard trim. They just like nailed it onto these two boards to make a door. But it had a lock. Um, but you could definitely pick this lock with, like, a number two pencil. <laughs> like, it was just the crappiest do-nothing lock that ever was. And I was like, can't wait to get out of here. So, flash forward, me and my buddy finally get on this train, and we are psyched to get out of Calcutta. Like, we're like, we're gonna do it, man! Um, turns out the reason the lady looked at us so incredulously was because we bought tickets for the part of the train that nobody pays for. Like, it's basically just for stowaways. And so, we bought beds. They're like benches that you sleep on. We're like, yeah, we paid money for them. But, like, because it's understood that they're all for stowaways, like, everyone just kept taking our benches. Like, if we moved to go to the bathroom or whatever, like, people would take all our seats and stuff. So, he had a bunk and I had a bunk. So, I was like, dude, like, 
Normally I wouldn't care because normally I'm the stowaway, but I spent money on this. I'm taking this whole seat. So I just like spread out like as much as I could to take up as I was like, I paid for this. It's mine. But people would like, if I dozed off, people would like sit on my feet and stuff. Like, get out of here. So I eventually like got everyone. Like one time I like, I just, there was a guy just sitting on my feet and I was so exhausted. I just dozed off. But then I woke up. I was like, I have to go to the toilet, which by the way, is just a hole in the train. Yeah. Oh. So like it just drops all your shit like oh. wherever the train happens to be, you know, like at a train station. So your shit just falls out the bottom of the train at the train station, which I didn't like. That's somewhat normal for a train, but yeah, my buddy had the same reaction that you're having, which was just oh no, why stop what you're doing, India? But uh, yeah, so I got up to go to the bathroom. I just told this guy I was like, I'm going up to the toilet. Be gone when I get back. Do not be anywhere near the things I paid for. And he was when I got back. But, uh, yeah, so at one point in time, I'm, like, laying, like, defiling these people trying to take my space that I paid for. And uh, I am all on this singular bench I paid for. And I look across the way, and there are six people crammed onto the next bench. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, shut up. Yeah, I get it. But you're not coming over here. Like, I paid for this. <laughs> no. There were six people on, on the other bench and two on the floor. Like, curled up laying on the floor. And there's, like, they've got a thing in India, like... It's a different social, like different social norms, but it's not super weird to just stare really hard and really close at somebody like they're not actually a person. So like I'd be laying down and this dude with creepy bug eyes was just like gargoyled over me like, <sighs> just like <laughs> unblinkingly staring at me like get out of my face guy. And then uh, the lady next to him who was also in my face was doing the classic old Asian lady, deep throat, open mouth cough, like straight into my face, like, ah! <laughs> like, Raz just like, I hate it here. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the, it was full of beggars, and uh, anytime we doze off, there'd be like, people would come on and try to sell stuff, like coffee and chai, and they'd just scream at the top of their lungs, like right at our face, like, chai! Coffee chai! Like, no, still no, get out of here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just the worst, it was the worst. How long do you think this train ride was? Seven hours. 35 hours! Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, of mobile <laughs> Calcutta. Like, just cramped into a space without any real food or anything. It was not great. Uh, that is why the lady looked at us like we just made a terrible error in judgment, because we had just made a terrible error in judgment. Uh, but we did eventually leave, and we got to a kick-ass place called Hampi, which is the bouldering capital of India. Way laid back, way less trash, like almost no trash. Like it's got a lot of foreigners in it, uh, which is fine, but just ruins, nice ruins, like historically maintained. And it really blew my mind to like visit all this stuff. We did a little bit of uh, like there's one temple, like the roof of the temple is at ground level because it was built in the ground, so it flooded out. So we're like, oh, we'll just go like gross semi spelunking into this temple. And uh, my buddy had his had his light, so we like went into this room, and yeah, it's just full of like stagnant, gross water and bats. <laughs> like, well, you've got all the rabies now, but uh, that was pretty cool. But around this time, my buddy started to develop uh, very obvious symptoms that he was getting sick, and uh, it turns out right before he left for India, he had his wisdom teeth taken out, and they got infected, so he was on medicine for that. And then he was on prophylactic medicine for malaria, because he bought these malaria pills. So then he went all the way around the world to the opposite time zone on a different eating and sleeping schedule with a different eating habits to the height of poverty, to the highest stress environment that you possibly can, and then was trapped on a train for 35 hours with nothing but anger and sick people. And uh, <laughs> so his body had finally just broken down, and so he was just like getting irritable and feverish and like just 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 on the cusp of illness like it wasn't like destroying him but it was like he was getting sick like he was sick and it was getting worse so that's that's when his sickness started it culminated he we almost made it the entire india trip without him getting diarrhea and on the last day we got to delhi where he was flying out and he got diarrhea he got the delhi belly on the final day <laughs> And he gambled on a fart, and he lost, and he pooped his pants. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like, yeah, well, it was, you know, 
Like, it doesn't really count because it was just a little bit. Like, it was just like a shart. Like, the first part of shart is shit! Like, you de- like something is something. You definitely just, pooped yourself. There's just one little squirt. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, that counts. I caught it right after. Yeah. <laughs> I shut the floodgates. Like, yeah, that counts as shitting your pants. Just because it wasn't a full, like, take a deep breath and push as hard as you can dump doesn't mean you didn't shit your pants. You shit your pants. Which is fine. But, uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a thing that happened. Like, by that time... He was full blown sick. Like he had to take a shawl and like wet it down and wrap it around him and take a bunch of aspirin to like keep his fever down. And uh, we actually went hiking around uh, for like some kind of cold and flu medicine, which we found in like a back alley, like stall, like a street market, just an unlabeled package with no directions, <laughs> like cold and flu medicine with like no dosage or anything. I was like, "Aren't you already taking stuff?" And he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "What if they interact?" He's like, "Well, we'll, we'll be fine." Like he gambled and won though. Like he 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 seemed fine. He probably got permanent liver, liver damage, but whatever. He's I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So I mean, we went to all kinds of different places. We did go to the beach. So we went to we went to Goa, which is the like tourist capital mm. of India. Like it's a very nice. It's like the the SoCal of India. It's the southwest side of India. It's just it is nice. It's real nice. Just pristine ish beaches. Uh, but when we got there, apart from the course, we get there, and. Uh, like, there's, like, stairs going down on the beach where we were staying. And the stairs, like, stopped, like, three feet before they got to the beach. So there's, like, a bit of a drop-off. And, like, stuff was kind of wrecked. But I was like, ah, typical India. Like, stuff's broken. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this. Lots of cows everywhere. Like, nonstop cows because they're sacred. Mm. So they're just all over the place all the time. Which is cool because, I mean, they're, they're like, chill. They're laid back. And I like cows. So I just kind of, like, pet them and play with them whenever I felt like it. Which, which was nice. But, like... They are everywhere. So you'd be on the beach and there'd just be like a pile of like seven cows just chilling. Like, yeah, that's it's, kind of cool. But, uh, so I'm looking around. I'm like, yeah, this is India. Stuff's going to be broken. Why wouldn't it be? And someone was like, oh, no, this beach used to be a lot nicer just before you got here. A huge, uh, not typhoon. No, it was not a typhoon. Tsunami. Tsunami, yeah. <laughs> a huge tsunami came and like rolled in and broke a bunch of stuff and then sucked out like three feet where the beach <laughs> so like the, the the sand level had actually dropped down like a meter and they were like scrambling to catch up so they're like trying to build new stairs to like get down to where the beach now was and everyone was like yeah it's nice but it was way nicer like right before you got here I'm like of course it was because everything's always nicer right before i get there but uh yeah so the beach was just rife with uh, you know, like every other place is rife with touts and like people trying to rip you off. But my buddy is not used to the no fixed price, everything's a scam situation. So we're walking along the beach and someone's like, oh, hey, you know, you're starting to grow your hair out. And he's, his hair is about as long as your hair. About as long as Aaron's hair. So I don't know, how many inches long would you say your longest hairs are? Like three, uh, four? Probably about four inches. About four inches long. Like, like long enough that you can comb it and style it. But short enough that, like, you can come and style it to look like a respectable business person. So he's growing his hair out. He's got it, he's got it small on the sides, but, like, longish on the top. And uh, someone's like, oh, yeah, I can braid your hair. I can I can do this. I can do that. And he's like, well, you know what? I might like a, like a hair braid. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, one braid down the side, like, horizontally to your head, that could look pretty cool, actually. And they're like, oh, no, we got to braid your whole head, man. We've got to gotta do, you can put, like, six, six braids in there. I was like, don't do it, man. It's not going to look good. You're not gonna so like it. Get, like cornrows, <laughs> basically. And I was like, I was like, don't do it. It's gonna be like way more expensive. Just get the one that could be enjoyable and cool. Don't get your whole head braided. He's like, no, I just want the one. Like it's fine. And they're like, okay, we'll just give you the one. I was like, they're gonna try to con you into getting more. Don't fall for this. And he's like, I got this. And I was like, all right, well. So we wandered into their like little tent kind of thing, um, and uh, they're just selling like all kinds of stuff. And uh, so we got have a seat on the seat on the floor. We'll we'll braid your hair. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not gonna stand around for this. I'm gonna go on the beach and play with the dogs and cows and stuff. I'll be back in a second to see you know, check on you. So I wander out. I come back in like five or ten minutes later. His whole head is braided. He's covered in brand new clothes. He's got like jewelry draped all <laughs> over him. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, they just kept offering me yeah, all they this just stuff. Kept <laughs> piling shit on me. And I was like, well, have you bought any of this stuff? He's like, no, I haven't bought anything. I'm gonna tell I keep telling him I don't want it. So I'm standing there and he's like, and they're like, oh yeah, how do you like how do you like your whole head braided? He's like, I just want the one. Just want the one braid. And they're like, okay, yeah, but look look at all these other braids we got in there. Like, what about all this stuff? He's like, I don't want any of this stuff. I'm like, yeah, you tell him. Don't let him force anything on you. I'm going back out here. So then I leave again and I come back like ten minutes later. 
His whole head is braided. He paid for the whole head to be braided. And he's got, like, all this new jewelry and, like, sarongs and shawls and, like, <laughs> clothes and shit. It's like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even want this stuff. And, uh, yeah, he got ripped off, like, hardcore. And, uh, yeah, he did not like the braids. All His whole head braided. He kept it for, I don't know, like a day. And he's like, ah, I don't like this. But, uh, yeah, every time I turned around, I had to keep an eye on him, because he was constantly in, like, the sarongs he bought, like, just disintegrated, like, after a day. <laughs> like, I had, to, I had to really keep my eye on him, because he's a nice guy who's not used to, like, punching children. It's, it's the thing, they're like, I, I'm not a very assertive person. Uh, now, granted, I wouldn't buy something I don't actually want. That's no. what you think. I would just hand it back to him and just be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm not going to buy something I do not want. <laughs> That's what you think, but then, like, I no. told this, like, like they have, like, children and stuff, right? Like, you know, like, yeah. like between, well, no, like, I mean, I know, seven yeah, and I mean, 12. Thing, like, they're trying to sell you stuff, too, and, like, oh, you... This kid came up to me and was like, buy my bracelets, and I was like, no. And she was like, please, do not break my tiny heart. <laughs> exact words. <laughs> And so I saw her later that day, and she was like, hey, how about this? You know, it's, it's, it's only 200 rupees. And I was like, all right, let me take a look here. So I started looking at stuff. I'm like, all right, I'll take this. And she's like, all right, 800 rupees. And I was like, you said 200. And she's like, well, the price is up now. And I was like, don't, don't break my tiny heart. <laughs> she was like, you have a huge heart. I'm like, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> it's a condition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, like, like, yeah, like, I know I wouldn't do good with the, uh, like, price haggling kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think I, we talked about before that, like, it's just something that's, like, so ingrained into their culture. Yes. Uh, that when they go someplace where that, you know, like, here, where... Uh, it just comes off as really annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, working, like I, I've worked retail jobs and, like... like Indian what people. I, I worked at, what I worked at Circuit City. Uh, <laughs> like, this is 30 bucks. It's like, like, it's like yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a huge stereotype thing, but, like... I swear to God, <laughs> nine times out of ten, if I was dealing with a, someone who looked like they were from India, yeah, they would always try to haggle the price, yeah. for like a computer. I'm like, <laughs> or like they wrote me to like throw in extra stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. It has a fixed price. They're like, no, no. We were we were when I was working in Sam Ash, we were allowed to do that kind of thing and adjust the price and throw in shit. What's, but I always what's, hated. What's Sam Ash? It's a music store. Okay. It's like okay. A, well, in like Circuit City, we could kind of do that back when it was commission sales. Yeah, and that's what it was. Uh, because you could basically, you know, take a little bit out of your commission to throw something to, extra to in. close the sale. right? Yeah. But once they moved to non-commission, like it was just all hourly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we couldn't do any of that stuff anymore. <laughs> it's, see, I wasn't even worried about the commission. I just hated doing it because it's like this is a fucking store. You yeah. Know? It's, <laughs> it's like, not a garage sale. It's thousand dollars. That's how much you're fucking paying for. It. Like, I don't go to a fucking Arby's and tell them I'm going to pay two dollars for their sandwich. You fu- you pay it because why would that's you, how much it is. Why would you pay three hundred percent more than something was worth though? <laughs> Well, I mean that's fair, but you know, I mean that, that, that's I mean a thousand dollar guitar is really I was, fucking amazing. I was know? ripping on Arby's. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. no Arby's. Like, I'm not paying two dollars for this sandwich. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you should be paying like seventy cents. Arby's <laughs> makes their sandwich. They actually uh, I don't know anything they, about Arby's. They get their sandwiches from India. No, <laughs> scrape all the that shit makes off sense. The street. That makes sense. On a bun. That makes sense. That's See, how you get the meat. I, I actually like Arby's. I apparently I'm like a minority. <laughs> <laughs> Arby's get shit all the time. <laughs> And like, honestly, well, I don't eat fast food. I haven't had fast food. Like, of, of the fast ever. food chains, like, I think they have some of the best quality food. <laughs> no. uh, like, it, like uh, obviously, if you're getting, like, you know, the cheapest, like, dollar menu stuff, it's not great. But if you get their, like, market fresh sandwiches, like, it's as good as you're going to get as, like, a deli. Uh, it's rallies like, is the top tier. Dude. Rallies? <laughs> They're the top. That's the, speaking of, that's the, you know. Speaking on, on, on stuff that could potentially be gross, uh, like, in Calcutta, there was a lot of flyers for, uh, Basically, they were basically like hand job flyers. They they were for it did technically for massages, but like you could mm-hmm. tell that they weren't really massages. And uh, it's just like, why would I want a handy J in a country with no sanitation or toilet paper? <laughs> like you, I'll keep my bits to myself, and you you stay over there till we work out the situation on what we're gonna do here. Like, it's like 300 rupees, though, that's, Yeah, that's, I mean, the exchange <laughs> rate really... Ch- that's when you bargain them, though. <laughs> just, just like, only 300 rupees. Like, well, I'll give you the pleasure of touching my wiener. You can take a selfie with my wiener, <laughs> and I'll give you 10 rupees. What do you think it's of like, that? Well, you want your... Uh, do you have latex gloves? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seriously. For me to, like, push away from you? Uh, 
But yeah, what, what what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so anyway, so this girl, I'm haggling with this girl, this like 12 year old girl. She's like, don't do not break my tiny little heart. And I was like, don't break my heart, my tiny little heart. She's like, you have a huge heart. She did have, uh, she had some stuff I wanted. So I was like, well, you know what? I don't have any swim trunks. I just have underwear. So I will buy some swim trunks from you. And like, I don't know what else. Like I'm in the market for a sarong. I want a sarong and like maybe a bracelet. So like we were going back and forth. She's good. She she knew the game. It's a game. So like we're having a good time. We're going back and forth. We're joking, closing the deal. We got five. Finally got the price down to an agreeable price to both parties, which is the goal. Like, always remember that when you're haggling, if someone agrees on a price and they're like, at this at this price, my family will starve. Mm. Like, well then don't sell it to me. <laughs> your family's not going to starve or you wouldn't be selling it to me. Like, they're always lying. You just have to remember that. They, they would never sell you something at a loss. But, uh, you know, you get a feel for, like, what an acceptable amount is depending on the culture. So if they're like, hey, this thing's 800 rupees, you can be like, how about 200 rupees? And then they're like, oh, my God, you insult the quality of my thing. And that's when you're like, yeah, it's terrible quality. <laughs> and you go back and forth. And then, you know, uh, the, the, my personal goal is anywhere between one-third and a half of their initial asking price, depending on what it is. Um, but, yeah, so we got, a, we got a price down that's agreeable to both parties. Like, yeah, awesome. And uh, so I was like, oh, this, you know, this went really well. She's cool. Um, but there was, like, like her, her mentor or whatever, like, crusty old lady behind her was, like, giving her some advice. But every, anytime she'd give her the advice, it was, like, the wrong advice. Like, she was, like, backpedaling away from me buying more things <laughs> and like you know like you in in certain cultures you know respecting your elders is like the number one thing but it's mm-hmm. like they don't always know what's best and so like you can respect them to a fault and so it's just like anytime the girl would do something on her own I'm like yes yeah, is good you're good you know there's there's more stuff here i want i want to buy some more stuff anytime the old lady would interject would be like ah, uh, trip triple this, like uh, cut this one out, like uh, yeah, you're losing, you're losing it, you're gonna lose the whole sale. So <laughs> finally agreed on it. Um, but you have to remember, in most areas in India, making change is not a thing. So you'd be like, ah, oh, this bill, it's like, it's a larger bill. I would like to buy this item. You don't get change, like you just the money you hand over is like okay, well that's what you're paying for this thing. Like, and if all you have is a larger bill. Like, you really have to pre-negotiate what the change situation is going to be. Or just, like, add on more stuff. Yeah, so, like, like (laughs) before you even start the the game, you have to be like, can you break these bills? And if they're like, yes, not a problem. You're like, okay. So we agreed on everything. I was like, boom, gave this money. And then the old lady took it. She's like, I'm going to go get change. And she was gone for, like, ever. (laughs) And she was, like, running the shack next door with this other little girl. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to go next door and like get my change. And uh, they just would not give me my change. They kept trying to pay me off in like piles of garbage bracelets. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want your bracelets. I want my money. I want my money. And they're like, oh, no, we don't, we don't have it. We don't have your money. Like, we, we don't have any money. We just have these bracelets. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not buying anything. So we went on this like huge thing. They just would not give me my money back. We went on this huge thing. I finally slapped the bracelets out of the girl's hand. <laughs> and like, yeah, like I was just like, slap! And then like my buddy was like, oh, here, here it goes. Like cause it went on for a long time. It was like 20 minutes of like slowly escalating. And like they were in a shack. Like I was like two seconds away from knocking their shack down. <laughs> like I slapped the bracelets out of their hand. And my buddy was like, oh, uh, here, here it comes. It's coming. We're going to get uh, like a Nash Rampage. And uh, it, was, it was coming. I was going to destroy the, their entire livelihood until they finally realized that they were pissing me off, so they gave me their change. But also, they lost all the future sales that I was going to... So I was going to come back the next day and like buy a bunch more stuff. But the old lady ruined it all for the first like 12-year-old girl. The, the 12-year-old girl was good. You, the lesson there is not to listen to your elders. They don't know about... Uh, instant instant messenger and and Vine and uh, <laughs> <laughs> clock radios. They don't know what the kids are into these days. They're they're on it. Actually, you know what I just remembered? Like AOL Instant Messenger actually just just officially shut down. Really? Uh, like while you were gone? What? Uh, <laughs> I thought it shut down like. 15 years ago no, when I was gone. No, it's still been going apparently. Doing what? Like people still used it. How? Like on their phones? Like, I, I don't know if they have a phone app, but like, you, <laughs> they had it, like, on your like, desktop computer, you could still use it. Uh, like, people still have AOL. But like... Like, like the service still exists. I the had, company. I had no idea. Can you instant message... 
Can you AOL instant message someone who's not on AOL instant I don't messenger? Think so. No. So, uh, like, but there are people so, who like you have just had it forever. So you're like at a nice and, like, bar still or had whatever. Friends on it, so, and you're like, like and they would still communicate that. You're like, way. You're, like you're like talking talking <laughs> to uh, like a sexy stranger at a bar, and you're like, hey, could I get your uh, AOL instant messenger name for when we get out of here? <laughs> like maybe I'll send you an AOL instant message later. Is that right? Message, message, message. And I am. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Am. I'll, I'll I'm you later. I'll I am you later. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like because I had a friend, I guess who still <laughs> used it. Like, he had a couple of their friends that, like, that's the only way he ever talked to them. And they still, uh, they, they still connected <laughs> via their dial-up modem, so it's like, <laughs> beep, 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 beep. But, uh, but yeah, it was, like, uh, late December that the, uh, AOL as a messenger, like, finally shut down. Wow. Uh, that, that means that AOL was, like, making money off of that this whole time, you would think? Or apparently, lo- well, losing like, money apparently off of that Apparently AOL is still, like, a really big thing What do they do? Japan. Really? Yeah, first well, they're owned by Sony in Japan. First, I've heard of it, but also, <laughs> why would I know that? Uh, well, well and it, like, I guess they're owned by Yahoo, but okay. in Japan, like Yahoo owns AOL. Okay. Uh, and then, like in the U.S., they're owned by I think Time Warner. Or something. Okay, yeah, like a subsidiary, uh, yeah, like different subsidiaries, because like SoftBank has a huge stake in somebody over here, but in Japan, they're like an independent company i don't know it's confusing and i don't know yeah. about it i don't care i don't know about it <laughs> but yeah but yeah apparently like aol the not so much like the instant messenger but like aol the media company right is still like very popular huh there <laughs> that's crazy well here comes more about india because i don't know how long we've been talking but it feels like it's been a long time it's been a long uh, time a, i have a lot of a little under, 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 under. a lot of that's that's not too bad some significant editing will trim this down to a, a listenable uh clip probably if you don't care what I've been up to, you are in the wrong place. Buckle up, because bu- buckle up an hour and a half ago, because you are in the wrong place. But uh, yeah, what about India? So me and my buddy are traveling around India, of course. Um, when we go to leave, so we're like, okay, we took that train. It was miserable. Let's not do that again. So, so I told you we went to the beach, right? Good times. To get to the beach, we took a bus, but it was a long bus ride. So we took a sleeper bus. Which is like a regular bus. It's a 12 hour bus ride, but instead of seats, they have like cubicle beds. So you get your own little cubicle bed to lay down in for 12 hours. A pretty sweet deal, you would think. So we're like, yeah, this is, this is rad. So. Until you find out you're sharing it with like five other people. You do share it. <laughs> uh, you, they're mostly doubles, um, they're the same size as a regular bed but there's two people in there but me and my buddy were traveling together so we were just like cool we'll share a thing like it was just nice-ish like it's uh the the first one we had was uh like uh uh not quilted but like whatever it it wasn't like a like a blow-up mattress it was like (laughs) uh like a fabric that we could lay on it was nice and uh but it was all the way at the back of this double-decker bus with no shocks so anytime the bus would hit any of the numerous potholes, we would go fl- literally flying. We would bounce up, hit the ceiling, come down, hit the walls, then hit each other. And this went on for 12 hours. Um, there was air conditioning, which would alternate, uh, bet- but you can't control it. It's just on or off. It's a very zero and one binary situation. Mm-hmm. When it's on, it is like too cold to function. Like, you're, like, trying to shield your... And you can't close the vent. Like, it's just... Whoosh! Like, it just blows on you, and you're like, this is miserable. Like, I am freezing. <laughs> and then when it turns off, you're like, this is miserable. There's 80 people in this bus, and you can't open the windows. Yeah. Like, so it was, just, it was just alternating between misery. But we're on this bus, and, like, a few hours in, there was, uh... Getting onto the bus was a silly situation, because the bus driver was like, where are you guys going? We're like, we're going to Goa. Going to the beach, bro. Going to Goa. The guy's like, yeah, where? Where are you going? And we're like, to Goa. Go as a state. So, like, <laughs> like which we knew, but, like... So, be like, getting on the bus, where are you going? Missouri. We're going to <laughs> Illinois, bro. We're going to Illinois. And, they're like, yeah, where are you going? So, like, the guy was like, where are you going? And we're like, we're going to Goa. Our plan was to just go to Goa and then just, like, wing it. But uh, that's not an acceptable answer to the bus driver. Mm. So, he's like, where are you going? And we're like, we don't know. And this uh, English girl was like, no, he wants to know, like where in Goa you're going. We understand the question. It's the answer that we don't know. (laughs) Uh, We hadn't really considered it. We were just going to get to the state and wing it. And she was like, okay, well, I've been there ten times, so this is where I recommend. Like, all right, well, that's where we're going. 
So she was she was uh, rooming with this Englishman, and uh, so we're in our. You get a little curtain you can pull for for some privacy, and uh, yeah. So we're like in our little thing, and uh, a few hours go by. I'm like, oh man, I kind of have to pee. And my buddy's like, you have to pee too. Like we both have child's bladders, and uh, they're just like, man, when uh, when are we gonna stop for this toilet break? And the English guy was like, oh, you guys talking about going to the toilet? And we were like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, uh, they don't stop. And we're like, oh, you, of course they stop. This bus, this bus ride's like 14 hours long. Of course they have to stop. And he's like, no, they really don't stop, though. Uh, they do not give a shit. They're more like truck drivers, like people or their cargo. Their only job is to get from A to B. They don't give a shit about you. <laughs> and I was just like, what? And he's like, yeah, on the last bus I was on, uh, this one guy had diarrhea really bad. And they wouldn't stop and he shit his pants twice. So he was on like a he was on like a twelve hour bus ride. The guy has to poop. They won't stop. He shits himself. Then he has to like later go again. And they're still like. Then no. he has to like hang out in his poopy <laughs> pants for like six hours, and then he shits himself again. Like like duty on duty, uncontrollable diarrhea. And then he's got to ride around with like a double poop pants for twelve hours, and everyone else on the bus has to cope with that. Plus, like, what if he? What if someone else was sharing a bed with him? Like, yeah. like that's that's ridiculous. We were like, oh my god, like we're gonna die on this bus. But he thankfully, like, my buddy was drinking. Better a hope soda. you draw it. <laughs> like, is there a bottle anywhere? Yeah, my buddy like... was drinking a like I can't remember if it's Seven Up or Sprite, one of the two. And so we had that bottle. So we just we just alternated pissing into this bottle for the duration of of the trip. That's not very big. I've I've beaten bottles before, and like. They fill up real fast. Yes, yeah, so if it's just like a twenty ounce bottle, like. yeah, yeah, they fill up real fast. Like you have to like, you'd have to just like pinch it, like you know what I mean, like just pee enough. Yeah, just, just so you enough. You're like rationing. Your... <laughs> <laughs> if you've already peed three times, stop peeing. I have to pee. Like your peas are too thick. You're clogging the bottle. Like, uh... Also, it was a narrow mouth bottle, and we're on like a really yeah. lumpy road. So like one misstep. And we're pissing all over the place where we have to sleep. Yeah. Um, so it's. Uh, I would have thought that you would have. Uh, that you would have just like tried to open the window and just like. They don't open. Your dick. They don't open, or I would have flopped my wiener out of the window and just let it flap in the breeze while I'm peeing everywhere. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's you can't open the windows. They don't physically open. So. Well, like uh, it was the bottle. Just... Like, if you just have to pee, just, like, you know, tell the bus driver to, like, open the bus door. And just pee <laughs> while you're driving. Hang out with one hand. Just like, ah! Just like, <laughs> look, it's like, look, it's either that or I'm pissing all over your floor. And it's that's like, it. They would just prefer you piss on the floor. Oh, that's what you should do. Walk up to the front and, like, make eye <laughs> contact with the bus driver. Just start just pissing. Piss yeah, just start <laughs> pissing. What do you think of this, huh? I'm foreign. What are you going to do? Here's a tip. You're not doing shit. <laughs> Bakshish. See, here's a fine I'll be happy to pay for pissing all over everything. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that was a thing. So we got to the beach. It was fine. We went parasail. I convinced him to go parasailing, and uh, which was cool because I was going to tape it for my blog. So he taped, uh, he taped me from the boat parasailing, and I was recording me, like, up in the sky. And I was like, this is going to be so cool with my Hong Kong bootleg GoPro. Yeah, I didn't record anything. So all <laughs> I have is a video of, like, me from the boat. Just, like, it doesn't look as cool as, like, being up in the sky yeah. like it was rad but you it's like a son of a bitch i hit it like too many times i got i got a half second recording it's like <laughs> damn it it's like i field tested it around the beach to make sure it was gonna work and it was working um so i just i hit the button i like fat fingered the button going up and i was like well son of a bitch um but what i didn't realize was as as you know we're like gearing up and strapping on my buddy was like man this is this is crazy. And I'm like, ah, this is this is nothing. What are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I'm afraid of heights. I'm like, what? I didn't <laughs> know that. He's like, yeah, I'm, af I'm afraid of heights. I'm like, but we go mountain climbing and stuff all the time. He's like, yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm afraid of heights. So he was like, like, racked with uh, anxiety <laughs> before he like shot up into the parachute. And then he was fine. It was fine. It was very relaxing. But yeah, man. Uh, and then we w like, we were pretty to ourselves most of the time, but then we were in the beach. He was like, yeah, let's go out and, like, drink in a party and find some foreigners and, like, exchange stories. Like, that'd be cool. So we hadn't really seen any other foreigners. Like, it's just been us adventuring around India with Indian people. And he's like, I want to talk to some foreigners and, like, see what their experience is like. And I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. So we went to, like, all the spots that are supposed to be the foreigner hotspots. And there were no foreigners. It was all just Indian people. We were there, like, the wrong day. It was, like, India's day off and, like, foreigners... 
were at work or gone or asleep or something. <laughs> but yeah, it, it didn't pan out, so we just wound up drinking and just bar hopping all by ourselves. Uh, it was pretty good, though. Let me see. Oh, yeah, so we got to Mumbai. We went to the oldest, largest shopping mall in India, the High Street Phoenix Mall. Uh, talking about the Quest Mall in Calcutta. Can't hold a candle to the High Street Phoenix Mall. It's got a child's playground in it. It's got movie theaters. Apparently it has a bowling alley, but we never found it. But it's a huge <laughs> mall. The fact that we didn't find stuff related to the mall dictates how big the mall is. There's a giant hotel that's part of the mall with like valet service and fountains and stuff. Like It's the creme de la creme of ridiculous malls. Really cool stuff, but once again, like in a ghetto. Uh, just a really ridiculous disparity wealth but uh so we're in mumbai and uh time time's coming to an end for my buddy he's got a flight out of delhi we have to be in delhi at a specific time and he's like you know i don't know like how we're gonna get to delhi or like how we're gonna get to these other places in time and i was like yeah we should probably have a consultation with a travel agent let's go let's go find one of these guys so we did uh we went to this travel agent and he mapped out this like down to the wire elaborate train hopping schedule and he's like if you can catch every one of these trains because we want to go to the Taj Mahal it's like the number one thing to see and do in India the Taj Mahal you gotta go if you're going to India go to the Taj Mahal and uh, I'm like yeah obviously we have to go to the Taj Mahal man and uh, so we want to go to the Taj Mahal and then he had to be in Delhi to fly out so we're like alright alright how can we get from here to these other places we want to go to the Taj Mahal to Delhi to get you out of here on time and so the guy gave us a, a down-to-the-wire elaborate train schedule. Nothing in India is ever on time. Spoiler mm -hmm. alert. Mm -hmm. But he's like, if you can catch all these trains, this will get you where, you know, you, know you, you get to the Taj Mahal, and then you'll be back in Delhi in time for this guy to fly out. I'm like, all right. It's going to be close, but I trust this uh, shady travel agent guy. And he's like, well, just hand over all your money, and then uh, you get these tickets. I'm like, all right. Well, it's probably our only choice, really, because we can't, like, independently buy these tickets. So we'll do it. So give him the money, and he's like, all right, I have to go get these tickets, so you guys you guys just leave and come back in like half an hour. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part, yeah. So yeah that, that'd like, be how I would be, too. It's uh, like, all right, you just come back half an hour, I'll have your tickets. like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> you're just taking all, you're just going home now. Yeah, I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, we, already, we already gave him the money. Like, ah. Uh, <laughs> But on the other hand, I'm like, well, there's no enforced laws in India, so I could just beat this guy up and take everything I want. <laughs> I'm like, this travel agency is mine now. What do you think of that? <laughs> Would you like to pay me a tip or a fine to get your travel agency back? But I was like, I, I, uh, my buddy's like, yeah, you're not going to go for this, are you? I was like, well, all right, this is kind of the way things are done here, so we'll, we'll give it a shot. We already handed over our money, so short of, like, trashing this place, this is our only option. And uh, he's like, yeah, like right down the right down the road here, there's a like a swanky rooftop restaurant. You can just go chill out there, get to like enjoy the ambiance, and then come back in half an hour. I'm like, that's fine. So we go there. Um, we use the Wi-Fi on his phone to talk to one of my Japanese buddies who lives in Mumbai. We were going to try to hook up with, um, but traffic was really bad. So we actually did get together with him for about three or four minutes. Just like, hey, I haven't seen you in like uh, eight years. Anyway, nice seeing you. I gotta get out of here. But, uh, because we had a bus to catch, to mm -hmm. catch this train, to catch another bus to catch a train, and, and so on and so forth. We were hoping. Um, so we got up there, we had a, we had a nice cup of masala chai, we were up there just enjoying the, the, the panoramic view of Mumbai, and they were like, oh, time to go get our, uh, our train tickets. So we go back to the travel agent, he is there, I'm like, okay, well, this is already going better than I thought. <laughs> he did not have our tickets. Say, I was going to see if we go back there, oh, shop's closed. Yeah, like, closed? <laughs> that and, was everything just, and everything's disappeared from inside. Yeah. <laughs> That was our running joke, like, closed. But, yeah, so we uh, we went back, and the guy was like, yeah, I don't have your tickets, um, but I will email them to you once you get to the next city that you guys are going to. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, like, too much time has passed. This guy doesn't even have our money now. Like, like we gave it up, and he left and, like, deposited it somewhere. Like, even if I do beat him up, he's not going to have anything. <laughs> and uh, so, begrudgingly, we agreed on this plan, but only after exchanging every possible mode of communication. So, like, they exchanged phone numbers, they were, like, became Facebook friends, we, like, were researching his Facebook to make sure it wasn't a dummy account, like, how long has this been active, like, what's going on here? It all seemed as legit as things get in India. So we were like, okay, okay. So we, we did take a bus and we went off to, to the next thing we were doing in the next state, and uh, eventually we did get emailed our tickets, so that was, like, pretty cool. We are like, alright, awesome. So then uh, 
get up to Delhi, then we go back down to the Taj Mahal, and we get there, and uh, the Taj Mahal is closed. Closed! <laughs> it's only closed one day of the week, and that was the day. It's closed on Fridays for worship, because it's, it's like a mosque. And uh, so we were like, well, shit, like, you can't get anywhere near it. So, like, and that was literally the only day that we could have made it, like, with my buddies flied out. So we were like, okay, well, we'll just get in this, just get a taxi, and uh, we'll just get as close as we can until we can, like, see it. At least, like, prove we were here. Take a picture. But the air was so smoggy, like, you couldn't even see it. So, and the taxi driver was like, hey, like, uh... I'll give you a hot tip on, like, where you can go to, like, get an actual view of the Taj Mahal. We're like, all right, cool. He's like, you can go through these gardens. You gotta pay to get in, though. And I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. He's like, or you can, like, try to sneak around. I'm like, that's what I'm doing. And uh, so me and my buddy were, like, trespassing on private property to get around to the river that acts as a moat to the Taj Mahal. We're on, like, private property. This guy, this Indian guy, is outside, and he's like, hey, you know, you can't be here, or whatever. Like, I, I don't think he was speaking English, but we just ignored him. We're like, whatever. So we just got over the the blockade and everything and like made it as close as we could we took a picture of us in front of the like smoggy taj mahal that you can like kind of see and we're like mm, like frowny face like this is as good as it gets i guess and uh, as we were leaving this guy had like a big ass rifle so he's probably about to murder us on his property if we tried <laughs> anything but i guess he didn't because he realized all we were there to do was take a picture of the taj mahal and leave uh which we did so then the guy was like well uh so your, your trip to Agra is a, kind of a bust. And uh, we're like, yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, and he's like, well, you know, we're famous for arts and crafts. Why don't I take you on an arts and crafts tour? And I was like, yeah, no thanks, pal. I know I know what this is. And uh, he's like, no, no, no. I'm going to go take you to, like, the artisans who manufacture the crafts. And you can see how they're made. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. I've been on one of these. Like, I'm going to go watch how they're made. And then there's going to be a real hard sell to make me buy these arts and crafts. I'm not going to buy any of them. And my buddy George was like, I kind of want to see how things are made. <laughs> and I was like, that's fine. Like, we can go. But just I just want you to know what you're getting into. And he's like, yeah, that's, yeah I got it. It's, it's cool. I'm like, all right, let's go. So we go to the artisan that uh, hand carves these, like, marble doodads. Um, the same marble that the Taj Mahal is made out of. And they chisel out with this, like, little tungsten rod uh, specific shapes. And then they take precious gems and stones and stuff and fit them into the marble and sand them down so that it looks like it's well it is like completely level with the marble it looks like it's just like painted on but actually they're inlaid gemstones and they make these like extremely elaborate uh things out of them like really just high level craftsmanship and uh and super expensive I'm sure. super expensive yeah <laughs> super expensive very nice super expensive and, uh, yeah, so George bought a bunch of marble stuff. And, uh, because once again, like, he's, he's a nice guy and he's not used to, like, all that stuff. And, uh, so he bought a bunch of marble stuff. And then the next stop was, uh, like, the, uh, the cashmere rug guy. And so he goes, we go in and, like, showing off all these cashmere rugs and, like, the loom and how it all works. Yep, so he bought a rug. <laughs> then we leave there. And uh, then we go to, like, the, the, the esoteric tea shop for these all these different kinds of teas and stuff. Then he walks out with, like, a like a big crate of tea. And he's like, no more! No more! And the guy's like, well, we have a guy that, like, makes jewelry. And he's like, no, I don't want to go to any more people. I just want to get out of here. He just has, like, he's just, like spent all his money. And uh, just all the time. Like I said, I, I couldn't, couldn't leave him alone for too long. Um, but, yeah, and then... Um, we didn't want to be in Agra anymore because there's like nothing to do there that's not the Taj Mahal or buying arts and crafts. Mm. And uh, But our train didn't leave for like another eight hours. And we were like, oh yeah, it's also where I got this belt buckle while he was wandering around. I found a dude and I was like, hey, do you have anything like big and gaudy? And he's like, man, I don't know. And he's like digging through a box of stuff and he had this. So we haggled for a while and I was like, I'll take it for basically nothing. And he's like, <laughs> all right. And I'm like, I know you can't sell this because it was like in a shoe box like full of garbage <laughs> so I, it's not out displayed or anything i had to specifically ask about it and he's like yeah but i know that you want it because you specifically asked for it I'm like well it's not special though so you know you go back and forth like it's worthless and he's like well it's worth something to you I'm like all right yeah let's play the game fine yeah, I, I gave, gave you a price i gave you I, I told you five rupees yeah yeah so we go back and forth and then i got my my new ridiculous gaudy belt buckle for the year and uh which uh yeah i can't believe you never realized yeah, you should look at some. You should look at some pictures. Well, I don't ever like look at your dick. Well, you're, you're missing out because it's always <laughs> accented by a giant gaudy belt buckle. 
My favorite one is Calico Jack's sigil that I have, uh, but I also had a, a couple of other good ones. They've all got stories and stuff behind them. Yeah, I can't believe you never know. You check out my pictures on my blog. It's always just front and center. It's my, uh, my wiener shield. But anyway, yeah, so uh, we just go to the train station, and I was like, well, I guess we could just try to, like, get on a train, like uh, like all the stowaways do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we go to the train station, and there's, like, one that's kind of, like, sitting there with the conductor kind of hanging off. And I was like, hey, does this train go to Delhi? And the guy's like, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then it started to pull away. Like, started to pull away from the platform. I was like, can can we get on? And he's like, yeah, if you can get on. Like, if you hurry. And we're like, okay. So we start walking, like, to get on the train. And it's just, like, starts leaving the platform. Like, just, like, just turns into train mode. And, like, he's, like, leaving the station. We're like, ah. And he's like, yeah, you better hurry if you want to get on this train. So we had to actually run and jump onto the train, which we did. And we made it. <laughs> and uh, Which wasn't a problem for me because I wasn't saddled with, like, cashmere rugs and, like, <laughs> yeah. marble and shit. But George made it on, too. It didn't lose any of expensive stuff. And then on the train ride back, it was actually the coolest train we rode because uh, there was... Um, some super cool guys from this little village in somewhere in India. Um, but uh, they ha- this was the first time they'd ever left their village. They were going to Delhi for a four-month kinesiology training course. And they were both martial arts practitioners and yoga practitioners. So we were, like, exchanging theories and moves and techniques and stuff. It was a really cool ride. Uh, they issued me, like, a yoga challenge and there's one of these moves I have yet to do. And George was like, oh, you mean this? I'm like, how are you doing that? It's because he's got long monkey arms. Like, my <laughs> I have T-Rex arms. Like, because you got you to do the full lotus position. And you reach behind your back and grab your opposite foot with both hands at the same time. And then pull your, pull your feet farther back. And, uh, which is, I can do both of those things independently. But, like, I, I don't know if my arms are too small. I don't think so. I'm sure I'll be able to do it. It's got to yeah, practice a little bit. But George was like, whoop, and just did it. I'm like, ugh, it's because your arms are the same length as your body. <laughs> like, that's, you're six and a half feet tall, and your arms are also six and a half feet long each. <laughs> like, you're, you're biologically cheating, or I'm at a disadvantage, something. But, uh, yeah, so that was cool. We got back to Delhi. He pooped his pants. Uh, the next day, he took off, and then I was like, okay, back to, back to my onesies. So what, what am I going to do here? And, uh, by, you know, by this time, I'd already been in India, like, a few weeks I was like, that's starting to wear on me, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's up. So I checked out of the, the, the hotel we were in. Because we're going to use a hostel as our base. But he was so sick by this point. I was like, I should probably keep you quarantined, like, for your safety and their safety. I don't want this plague you have to, like, be spreading around everywhere else. Not that they would notice. Because they would just blend in with all the other diseases. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I checked into this hostel. And then they went on, uh, went on a city tour, which was pretty cool. And one of the chicks who was leading the tour was like a secondary black belt in Okinawan karate. So we had some stuff to talk about. And then uh, then we went on a pub crawl. And then we went out dancing. Um, and so I'm like in this club, just like dancing it up. Like, yeah, like drinking and dancing all night. And all these dudes kept coming up and dancing with me. And I was like, well, you know, it's India. So like it's kind of segregated. So like maybe that's the cultural norm here. Um, and then all the dudes were like, oh, yeah, you get like a big bulgy personality. That's pretty sweet. I was like, yeah, my personality is the best, man. Never going to find a stronger personality than this one. And uh, they're like, yeah, let's take some selfies. I'm like, yeah, like all like feeling my arms and shoulders and stuff. And then I, was, I went up to the, 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 the guide that was like leading this, this club crawl. And I was like, is this like a normal Indian thing? He's like, nah, it's just a gay dude thing. Like that's uh, <laughs> it's just a gay dude. I'm like, ah, they got me again. But yeah, the hostel was pretty rad because on the roof, um, they had like a cleared rooftop. It was like a multi-story building. And up at the top, they had a big billboard. So I would, like, climb up on this billboard and do pull-ups and stuff, like, overlooking the city of Delhi and then, like, working out up there. And when I was up there training one day in the middle of the night, I was up there one night training, like, doing martial arts and stuff. I looked over at a different rooftop, and there was a dude doing kung fu, like, <laughs> on another roof. And I was like, oh, that is so rad. Like, I wish I could just go over there and have, like, an old-school Hong Kong rooftop challenge fight. <laughs> like, I could just see him, like, doing his kung fu forms. I just wanted to be like, yo! Over here, let's, let's cross fists. Like I'm gonna try to parkour my way over there. But yeah, there's too too many too many gaps in roofs and stuff. And then by the time I had like mentally navigated how I was gonna get over there, the guy was gone. And it's just like, oh man, what a cool like in that moment, like what a cool moment. But uh, yeah, eventually India really wore on me, so I was like, I, I gotta get out of here. Like this is too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Nepal, take a break from India. But to get to Nepal. 
I was like, how am I going to do this? So I... Like, yeah, if you're in Goa, that's what, like, southwest? That's southwest. Well, yeah, this so basically I'm, you're in the opposite well, side. Well, I'm, I'm in Delhi India. now. I'm in Delhi. He flew, okay. out of, he flew out of Delhi. I'm in Delhi. I, I stayed in Delhi, like, another... Well, I didn't stay in Delhi another week, but, like, I stayed at this hostel another week, and I was, like, traveling around based out of that hostel in Delhi. And then I was like, all right, I, I got to get out of India. Like, a month in India it was really wearing me down. It's just too much death and garbage fires and smog and, and diarrhea. Oh, also, I, I had not had a month in India, no diarrhea. And I was just like, I am the golden child. I am unstoppable. I'm, I'm pushing my luck at this point. Yeah, I was like, I'm unstoppable. Because I was, you know, I'm eating street food. I'm like, I don't, I'm just doing everything. I'm doing everything that you're not supposed to do. I'm just like, I'm unbeatable. And uh, so I was like, all right, I'm going to take a train to Nepal. Well, they don't have trains. So you can take a train to the border and then go to Nepal. So I was like, yeah, I'm going I'm to get a train. So I go, I was like, how, how the hell am I going to get out of here? So I'm researching, like, all right, I'm just going to have to go to another travel agent and, like, have them buy these tickets because it's just easier. So I go to this guy, and he's like, yeah, there's no trains, man. Trains are booked up. They're booked up for a long time. And I was like, well, I want to leave now. And he's like, all right, let me see what you can do. Earlier that day, the day I tried to leave India, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm getting out of India. Like, today's the day. I just decided. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to leave. Right before I headed off to this travel agent, Diarrhea. And I was like, oh, the day I try to leave. And I was just like, oh my god. It wasn't full diarrhea. It was like it was like a warning. It was it was like it was like don't don't get too deep into your hubris. You're not you're not <laughs> unstoppable. This is just to let you know that you are not in control of the world. And I was just like, oh man. The potential for diarrhea is very real right now. Um it was just a taste. Just a taste of what could be. And I was like, man, I don't want this like for real deli belly. So I went to the guy and I was like, I need a train. And he's like, well, there are no trains. I was like, you don't, he's like, just take a bus. I was like, you don't understand, man. I need a train. I need a bathroom. I need to be able to get a toilet whenever I want a toilet at the drop of a hat. My stomach hurts. And he was like, okay, all right, let me see what we got here. He's like, nope, all the trains are booked. He's like, but there is a bus that has a toilet. And I was like, I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I'm mean, sure it's just like everywhere else. It's just a hole cut in the bus. <laughs> and he was <laughs> just shitting down the road. Just, uh, you know, like everyone else. But, uh, yeah, so I was like, I, I don't believe you. So he's like, hang on, let me call these guys just to make sure. So he calls the bus company, and he's like, yeah, you guys have a toilet? I'm like, yeah, we yeah, we have a to- toilet on our bus. And he's like, uh, okay, all right. So he's like, yeah, man, they, they've got it. They've got, we they got, they got, they like, they got, <laughs> he's like, yeah, we got a, we got a toilet on the bus. I was like, I need a toilet. I need access to a toilet. So I'll take a bus if it has a toilet, but I need to be picked up and taken out of here. I want to leave. I want a bus that actually shows up that has a toilet. And I don't feel good. So I just want to lay down. Like, does this, does this bus have a bed? Can I lay on that bed? Just try to zone out. This is supposed to be like, I think, it was, I can't remember if it was 12 hours, 12 hours, like 13 hour bus ride. And I was like, it's got to have a toilet, it's got to come get me, it's got to have a bed. And he's like, yeah, no problem. Yeah, there's this bus, this is the deluxe. It's got all these things. And I was like, are you serious? Because cause I'm serious. And he's like, yeah, man, but it's, it's not coming cheap. And I was like, okay. So he shows me the price tag. It's like three times more expensive than any of the other modes of transport that I've ever taken. But I was like, you know what? Now is when it matters. <laughs> if it I actually gonna... has all the abilities I want. Yeah, if, <laughs> if it's got all these things, he's like, it does. And I was like, fine, I will spend the money this one time to get a reliable, high-class bus with a nice bed-ish thing and a toilet that I probably will have to use immediately. And he's like, all right. So I buy the ticket, and I'm like, all right, cool. So <clears throat> I go to the bus station and I'm there like 40 minutes early and I'm just waiting around and the guy's like you know bus 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 attendant dude is around and like other people are around too and uh, I'm like hey I show my ticket and I'm like hey is this is this the right place for this bus and he's like yeah man you're in the right spot I'm like all right cool groovy yeah this is awesome and uh so then you know it gets close to the time and the bus isn't there and I'm like hey is this is this coming? He's like, yeah, it's coming. It's just running late. I'm like, all right, that, you know, things in India run late all the time. Like, nothing's ever on time. So I just want confirmation from the employee that this is a thing that's going to happen. And he's like, yeah, no worries. 
And uh, so then a little bit later comes in. It's like half hour. The bus hasn't shown up yet. I'm like, hey, what's going on? So the guy gets on his phone and he's like, oh, man, uh, looks like it's it's actually coming to a different station. It's, it's, it's still coming, but it's coming to a different station. Hop on the back of my motorcycle. I'll drive you over there. It's only like five minutes down the road. I was like, okay, that's fine. I got like a big ass backpack. You can get on his get on his motorcycle. It's very late slash early in the morning now. It's a it's late December, and uh, so we're like flying down the road. Like a half hour later, we get to this other station, and it is a bus station because there's buses there or a bus there. People are getting on. It's like in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, is is this my bus? He's like, not this one, the next one, though. I'm like, all right. So that bus drives away. I'm like waiting around. And now I actually have just, I, at least for once, I had diarrhea. Like I had one poop of diarrhea because I used the truck stop or bus station bathroom in the middle of the night with no lights. But thankfully, uh, the toilet was just the floor. So it's just like a, <laughs> just, just a, like a closet so I just went into the closet and pooped everywhere, and then uh, came back out, and then a bus came. And I was like, is this my bus? And the guy's like, no, the next one. And I was like, all right. So then that bus leaves. A little bit later, another bus comes. not my bus. I'm talking to this guy. This guy gets on the phone, and he's like, you know what? Actually, it's, uh, it's coming to a different spot. Hop on the back of my motorcycle. <laughs> I'm going to drive you over there. Let me read you an excerpt from my, uh, my blog post here. This is how the blog on India starts. Paragraph 1. <clears throat> it's 1 a.m. on a cold late December night, and I'm speeding down the highway, riding on the back of a motorcycle, racing my escape. Dodging cows in the road, I rocket towards a running bus. People are huddled by the garbage fires that rage around me. They've turned the air and sky to a permanent swamp, both in color and breathability. The streets are paved with trash and feces. The people doing everything in the same spot. Poop, sleep, bathe, wash clothes, make food, poop again. I'd missed my chance to grab some drinkable water a few hours earlier, and now I was out of luck. Who knows how long. This is not a dystopian future. This is the present in India. So that's the, that's the excerpt now. <laughs> um, so it turned out the bus was running so late... It had just refused to make any more stops. Like, it just wasn't going to stop anymore to pick anyone up. Uh -huh. So the guy was like, yeah, it's not, it's not going to stop. Like, they don't, I was like, but I bought a ticket. And they're like, yeah, but what, what are you going to do? Like, like, once again, it's India. What are you going to do? Like, <laughs> who are you going to yell at? Yes, who, who are you going to complain to? Yeah, who gonna, who, who's going to give you your money back? <laughs> Drive fast and get up alongside this bus. Yeah, so, <laughs> he, up with it. so he, was like, he was like, yeah, hop on the motorcycle. Oh, We've got to chase it down. And like force it to pick you up and i was like okay so yeah we're like driving and then uh like Rrr! like just it's it's so late and cold we're like flying down the the interstate in india and then he just stops and like we get off and it's the middle of nowhere there's like no lights or anything and i was like is is this it like is this the, <laughs> is this we're gonna shoot me in the back yeah, of the head like, everything? <laughs> yeah i was like there's more efficient ways to rob people than this, this, was this seems overly elaborate <laughs> india really is the king of scams <laughs> and uh yeah that's when he told me like yeah it's not gonna stop so we, we've gotta we've gotta like head it off and make it stop so we we had like found where the bus was going to be so we're like Rrr! then we, like, we made it stop just make like a roadblock <laughs> yeah basically and i was like there's there's a 50 50 chance we're gonna get run over by this <laughs> yeah. bus um it did stop though because i mean the guy also the guy driving me on his motorcycle was an employee of the bus company so, like, <laughs> he's just, just like, yeah, we'll, we'll get it, don't worry. Like, I'm worrying! <laughs> I'm somewhat worried at everything that's happening right now. Don't worry, I'm, this happens all the time. Uh, also, I was very, very tired. So, like, I'm on the back of this guy's motorcycle, like, nodding off. And I was like, if I mess up, I'm going to fall off this motorcycle. Like, I'm going to fall asleep and just plummet to my doom on this like just the side of the road and no one will care <laughs> like no one will care at all um but yeah we, we chased the bus down and i was just like finally whatever i get on the bus so item one is out the window it did not pick me up so that's a third of the expensive ass ticket right there like wasted because i had to like go hunt the bus down to get out of india like i was i was now trying to escape india and it was not making it easy it was like escape from new york but it was india yeah and i am kurt russell 
And so, finally made a stop. I get on. I get to my bed. It's super small. I pull open the curtain, and there's a dude in there. And I was just like, ugh! It was a single, but, like, it was shared anyway. And I was just like, oh, my God. And this, to this guy's credit, like, he was a super nice Indian guy. But I wasn't in the mood. And, like, I just opened the curtain, and he looks over at me, and he's like, which side do you want to sleep on? I'm like, ugh! <laughs> like, get out of here! And, uh, so I crawl up in there, and it is so cramped. And my stomach's like, Bruh! and I was like, oh, God, I'm going to shit my pants. And I was like, well, time to go use this toilet. So I go to the front of the bus, and I was like, where's the toilet? And they're like, well, we don't have a toilet. And I was like... <laughs> I was explicitly told there <laughs> yeah. would be a toilet! <laughs> and he was, he was like, oh, you have to, like, use the bathroom. And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, in here. I'm like, oh, okay, because there is a toilet. So they have this, like, thing by the, like, driver's cab. And so I open it up, and, uh, yeah, it's just a tiny little hole in the ground for pee. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, no no pooping in here. Like, this is just for just for urine. And, like, even then, it would be, like, a slow drip to get out of the bus or whatever. And I was like, peeing is not the issue here. Like, this is not the problem. <laughs> so the toilet that they had was just a tiny little hole in a, in a cubby and the side for peeing into. But I had diarrhea. <laughs> There you go, it's all liquid, it would just sift through. <laughs> no, you just like you just like pee around the hole and oh, then uh man. No, it wasn't like a glory hole That's in the side saying. of the bus. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, This area is out very No, I wish. It, it would have been more efficient if it was just a hole cut in the side <laughs> that you could put your wainer through. But no, they they, they were uh they were they were helpful to their female passenger, singular. Uh so they you know, they, they had a hole in the floor. But it was like the size of a thimble, like a, like less than a pinky finger. Um, so you just like peed around the hole and it eventually drained out. But uh, no pooping in there. And even though my poop was mostly liquid, it was like super high velocity liquid. Mm. There would have been no way to guarantee to drain any, it out quick enough. Yeah, to drain it out <laughs> ever, probably. Um, but it, there's no loss. So just, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I could have done that, but I was just like I couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, so I had to get up into this cubicle. And just have the diarrhea sweats next to this guy <laughs> for like thirteen hours of like gurgly tummy, uh, like like just cramped. The bus is all lumpy, like just like the bus ride was just like slam, 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 just really trying to make me shit my pants. But I didn't. I still have to this day never pooped my pants. <laughs> Very proud. I know it's coming though. It's definitely coming. Like none, <laughs> no one can outrun a bullet forever. Like, I'm see, definitely going to poop my pants. See, I, I haven't done it actually, yet. I've never shit my pants here, but I've never been in a situation where it would really happen. Every day's so. an almost for me. That's the thing. It's like, every day's an almost. This is the closest. I think this time is the closest. Or uh, the time I had, like, serious Giardia in Alaska. Like, that one was pretty close, too. <laughs> every day's an almost, but I did not, did not poop my pants. Um, let me see if I... Let me just quickly see if I missed any anecdotes here um oh yeah so once again that just reminds the bus ticket was a scam of course mm -hmm. i paid i paid triple for just this shithole bus to, to beat the beat the hell out of me piss hole bus yeah piss it was it was a piss hole bus <laughs> um i went to the largest museum in india in Kolkata. that was one of the things i did um technically yes it is the largest museum in india and in that it is a big building it is mostly empty so if you're looking for the largest collection of artifacts in india it's probably that too, but it's not very big in its collection, which is surprising. Uh, let's see here. Don't trust anybody. The, th the place I stayed at in Calcutta was terrible. Why are people taking my picture? I don't know. Oh, okay. So in Calcutta, when me and the Bengali guy were uh, jumping trains, there's a lot of people on those trains, right? I don't think anybody paid for them. Like, they're just, like, all beggars and, like, stowaways and stuff. So we jump onto this train, and we're, like, riding it. And I get smashed in to, like, the side of the train car. And I wind, there's, like, a bunch of bags on the floor, like, people's luggage. And I wound up, like, stepping on these crumpled bags for a little bit. And then, like, after a while, the, the crumpled bags, like, start pushing against me. And I look down, and I'm stepping on two crumpled up old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no! Like, and also, why did they not start pushing back immediately? Like, it took a while. 
for them to push back. But yeah, it was it was two crumpled up old ladies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't kill them, but like, <laughs> they probably died shortly after. But yeah, it was just like, oh no! Like, here's here's five rupees. Get yourself something nice. <laughs> it's like a fraction of a penny. Uh, let's see here. I'll cut this part out. Oh, okay, so I went to go meet George at the airport, uh, my buddy, and uh, we had no way to communicate with each other, right? So I had sent him a message on the internet before he left, and I was just like, hey, don't leave the airport. I will meet you at the airport. So I went back to the Calcutta airport, and they wouldn't let me in the airport. I went in, and then a bunch of armed guards threw me out because I had a backpack, and you need to pay a visitor's fee to go into the airport if you're not flying. So I was like, fine, I need to meet this guy, because we don't have any way of getting in contact with each other, and we're going to be backpacking around for a couple weeks together. I will pay this visitor's fee. So I pay the visitor's fee, try to go in. They're like, you can't come in here. I'm like, why? They're like, you have a backpack. I'm like, all right. And they're like, yeah, you can't, you can't have one with you, but uh, you can pay to store it. And I was like, oh, Fine. So I go to the, like, pay the guy to store it area, and he refuses to store it because it doesn't have a lock. Because it's just a backpack. And it's just, what's a lock gonna do? Like, everything here is useless. (laughs) Like, you could just slash the backpack if you want to steal something out of it. Or, like, rip the side of it open. Or just steal the backpack with the lock on it and deal with that later. And he's like, no. So, yeah, I got thrown out of the airport by armed guards. And so I was just like, shit. And I tried to explain to him, like, I need to meet this guy. We don't have any way of finding each other. And they're like, ah, he'll find you. We don't give a shit about you. So I just had to wander around the outside of the airport. And then his flight was delayed. So I just wandered around the outside of the airport. And uh, we did eventually find each other. But I was just like, man, freaking <laughs> India. Should have, like, had some, like, like Indian kid that was wandering around and be like, here, look, I'll give you 200 rupees. Just go in there to, to this area. <laughs> find and, the and white go, guy. Nosh? Yeah. Nosh? <laughs> Excuse me, buddy, Nosh? Like, yeah, yelling. exactly. My friend! <laughs> so they didn't have, like, even, like, the, uh... Like, they, they, you know, they had, like, the, you know, those, like, walkers. Yeah, they did not have those. Time. Uh, they did not have anything like that, even? Wow. Yeah, they did not have those. Are they worried about, like... Is that, like, a terror? I think they're, they're worried, worried about? about bag bombs and stuff, well, mostly. like, if that's the thing, though, you're still getting it stored in the fucking facility. So if you've got a strong enough bomb, or even a weak enough bomb... Well, the, like, the, you'll blow wait. up the facility that it's stored in. Not if there's a lock on the outside. It keeps the bomb. Oh, it keeps the bomb. Yeah, it keeps the explosion locked inside. Yeah. Oh, what, do you don't know anything about bombs? I know, I this know. This guy over here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about... It's 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 a very confusing mix. And Oh, that's the thing. All right, I didn't even talk about it. This will be how I, how I finish talking about India for, for this episode. Um, so that's the thing, right? So, like, a lot of the things I've been talking about have just been making India seem like a big, shitty garbage fire. Because it is. But I had a great time, overall, now that I'm not there, even though I had to literally escape India. But, uh, I mean, I had a great time. Uh, there's nice things to see and nice things to do and nice people there. It's just that, like, as a below-average wealth foreigner, you're going to be drawing the worst people towards you. You're not getting an accurate representation of the population. You're getting, like, the worst people coming to you. That being said, like, I still came in contact with, like, plenty of super rad people, um, which is really... It makes it really difficult to speak about India because it's almost like there's two different Indias that coexist within the same space. So, on the one hand, you've got the, like, you got the marble-floored malls... And you've got the, the people who are extremely wealthy. You've got, like, the Bollywood stars. You've got the upper caste. You've got, like, sometimes you'll go into, like, a bar in a city where it's illegal to have a bar. So it's like a like a old-timey, like, uh, like Prohibition-era situation. Or like Yeah, it's like a speakeasy. They sit you in the back. Like, you can't have any bottles on the table because it looks like you're drinking because you are. It's so, like they pour it and hide it. And, then you know, it's... It, and, the, and the service is impeccable. And uh, they have things on the menu that they won't tell you what they are. And, like, who are you going to complain to? Like, they don't give a shit. There's no, like, regulations. Like, hey, what's in this? They're like, none of your business. Do you want it or not? It's good. Like, that's it. And, like, like, but, like, they'll recommend stuff to you. The service is incredible. Like, you really get taken care of. And, like, you know, like, people from small villages. Like, I was telling you, the, the martial arts guys and the yoga guys. Like, cr- super nice. Um, 
like really help like people look out for you extremely helpful on the flip side of that you have like crushing oppression like uh it is not friendly to most like not wealthy foreigners and especially women like it can be extremely dangerous even in the daytime if you're like a lady by yourself and you're talking about like like the locals get robbed and shit too like all the time um and uh you know you got people pooping living and dying in the streets like right in front of you actual literal garbage fires raging all the time um it it is just weird because those those things coexist in the same space so like when you're speaking to someone about india who wasn't with you in that moment that you're speaking about you could be speaking about two very opposing places or like it could be the literal same place but it's like two very opposing like entities that coexist within the same space time like it's really weird it's like a, like an alternate reality version of the place you're right in and you're like sharing that because like my buddy was like i was in india and it was super nice and i was like oh you're probably in a different india like i said that jokingly but like i really do mean that though like there's like if if you're not experiencing that particular india at the same time with someone then talking to someone about india can be very convoluted and obtuse um yeah, like, like I mean, I have a, I have a friend who's Indian, and he has relatives who still live in India, and like he's gone back there a few times, and the from what I've gathered, the relatives that he has there are very wealthy. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, when we go there, it's it's amazing, right? It's like, you know, like we're we're just... staying at basically like this mansion. <laughs> like, you're, like we're chauffeured everywhere. Yeah, just flying a jetpack <laughs> everywhere from A to B, and yeah. And like, yeah, and they go to all these like, you know, really swanky places. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And he's like, but, but then on the same hand, like, but you're surrounded by this like crushing poverty everywhere yes. at the same time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really <laughs> weird. Um, it, it, it is unsettling too, because you're just like, yeah, like, true freedom, but at what cost? Like... And, uh, you know, like, I'm like, boo, down with the government. But I'm like, I, like, these people, because you're like, oh, these people should just pull themselves up and get a job. And, like, yeah, yeah make it that way. Like, th- there is literally no chance of that happening. Like, yeah. it's not because <laughs> they want to be living, like. It's because like, like they want to be living in squalor. Yeah, they it's don't want to like... be living in literal filth. <laughs> like, they, there are no opportunities. And, like, yeah. because of the culture, even though the caste system is illegal, like, Basically, like, well, you know, if you tried harder in a previous life, you'll come back as uh, someone that's lighter skinned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, ah, come on. Like, ugh. But yeah, one other uh, anecdote that, that's pretty quick that I thought was funny was um, uh, George and I were out, and there was a kid. We were coming out of some temple archaeological thing, and there was a kid who had, like, ancient currency that he was selling. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, he can't use it. Yeah. And whatever. So he was, like, trying to sell it for, like, a higher, much higher price than... But I was interested in it. So it was like, I was like, I do like this currency. Um, so he's like, show me these different uh, old East India Trading Company coins from when Eng- England ruled over um, India. That's the other thing that made me really uncomfortable, too, because I was like, no, you guys got your... You fought really hard for this freedom from India, or from uh, from Britain, and... Uh, Maybe you should go back. <laughs> like, like, what have you done in the past sixty years besides let everything deteriorate? Yeah, well, and yeah, that's the thing too. I've like read different places where it's like things used to be really nice. They did, and you could see the skeleton of like. I mean, people niceness. were pra- people were pretty much slaves, but things used to be really nice. Yeah, and so it's like it's really uncomfortable because you're like you either have oppressive slavery and like really nice stuff, or like. Everyone is poor, and there's no nice things. Is it, is it was it like literal? Like I don't know. It was not literal slavery. So, it was just so the like white man keeping the, people down. Yeah. So the point of like how we exist, like in the United States, or some people would view that. Yes. So so, like so it would that, be it, like it would nine be to five slavery. It was more like the rich white people giving the false hope. To like people who weren't rich, right? White people, so it would be so like you have like the lower like tier of class that are working and, and, and aspiring you're... to attain that because they're told that they can, right? Yet they cannot. Yes, but they still or have their shit. yeah, yeah, or or you would have like Indian people would be like waiting tables and like doing jobs that like basically you'd have like all of native India for the mo- not all of native India, but most of native India would be like subject to like 
menial jobs that the rich white people would deem below them. Um, but then... But the rich white people were bringing in all these businesses and things. Right. But then, like, no matter how <laughs> no matter how hard the Indian person worked, even if they accumulated some amount of money, they were never allowed to take better positions. Right. But that just seems like, if they would have kept that situation, that sounds like, the, like you know, early... 1900s here in america and america exactly the same yeah to the point where yeah you so rich guy. yeah so like when they abolished slavery here yeah. like like everyone was technically free in quotation marks but like you know a black guy could never get a job as like a manager of a store or like a ceo or something like that even though on paper it was feasible it was never an actual reality so that's how it kind of operated in colonial india so it was like yeah all these people were like still kind of better off maybe yeah. but like that's that's just like really really un- like india gave me really uncomfortable like confrontations with various realities so yeah. like i was saying the 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 wage disparity or not wage like the wealth inequality was like something i had to come to terms with and like really think about like my own stance on like i'd, have, I'd be like how do i feel about people not deserving total freedom because that's been like my whole thing i'm like everyone should just be free but i'm like i don't you can't handle it you can't handle the freedom (laughs) so now you need someone to watch over you so i'm like now you need the government and then i'm like okay well like what about like just distributing wealth more equally like that's a weird thing because it's got to come from somewhere Mm -hmm. and it's like well that's not fair to people who maybe legitimately acquired their wealth through extremely hard work and sacrifice but then it's like, then I had to come to terms with the fact that, like, uh, you know, now I'm like, maybe they should go back, you know, what, what about what about being under the rule of another country? Like, that's <laughs> shitty. Everyone should be allowed to, like, self-govern themselves. But I'm like, oh, you're not really doing a very good job of it. But then it's like, well, who am I to say that they're not doing a good job of it? Like, if they're happy, they're happy. Like, you can't judge. I, I even talked about that on the show. Like, you can't judge success by other people's definition yeah. of the word. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm and like... And that's the thing, like, I, that... Uh, from what I've gathered, that like, yeah, the, even though <clears throat> it's kind of shitty, they're happier with that exactly. shittiness. And I understand that, like, personally, because if another I, <laughs> yeah, I understand that personally, because I kind of under, uh, like, that's kind of me on a microcosm scale. Like, when I quit jobs and stuff, like, I would rather be my own <laughs> failure than be someone else's success. Like, I'd rather make it or break it on my own than have to deal with, like, someone else lording over me all the time. So, like, I get that, and they just took that and took it to the two billionth power. Like, <laughs> I, like, I, I, like, I kind of, kind of functionally understand that. But, like, total, like, 100% you can do whatever you want freedom, I don't think should exist. Because somebody that, you know, what about, like, the, I mean, it's a small subset, but serial killers, rapists, you know, all those kinds of people. Burn the forest they down. Should not, they should not have freedom to do that. And yes, I agree. And if they're I going agree. to, they should be locked up. You I know, agree. until they can be fixed, or if they can't be fixed, forever. Yeah, I agree. And that's the thing, like, if you go with a large enough population... Yeah, it's just a statistical that, thing. Like you're gonna get outliers. Otherwise, you get you basically you just get regional warlords. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah, <laughs> when there's like no law, time and then time whoever again, whoever has like the weapons, yeah, and, uh, or the resources, or the resources, yeah, like, just like you know what, I really they make the laws. Then. I'd really like some water. Like, well, too bad because I have all the water. So what are we gonna do about this? I, I feel like there's a difference between somebody that's. You know, like, you, if you wanted to... Parts of India are like Mad Max, that's all I'm saying. Like, it's a very Mad Max situation. Well, yeah. if, if you wanted to, you could, like, go and beat up some guy and take his money. If, if wanted I to. wanted to, I could steamroll most of that country you could. until the military got involved, because <laughs> I'm, like, twice the size of everyone. But, you know, like, I feel like there's, you know, I like, there's, you know, there's a difference between, like, just, like, total freedom, and then it's like, well... You know, as you were saying, consideration for, like, other people. Because I don't... I don't know. Plus, like, that's the other thing, too, is, like, you know, crappy roads and stuff like that. Like, I'm like, boo, government! But it's like, if if you don't pay taxes, and they don't go out of their way to fix those roads... No one's fixing their own roads. It's a pain in the ass to fix a road. And, like, you have to fix them every 10 to 24 months. So it's like... No, and, like, people have other stuff to do when you're too concerned with, like, growing crops or, like, having a family or you just want to take a day off and, like, 
watch all the episodes of Seinfeld in a row. And he's just like, oh shit, but I gotta pave my road again. Like, no one's gonna do that. So, yeah. And I think there's a big difference between a government that's governing, that's, you know, a small population that's in charge of two billion people versus like each state having their own government and there being no, you know, total right. overall yeah. overarching government. I mean, maybe yeah. to like communicate then, with other countries, that I was, makes I was sense. About, I was but, about to say, well, then you're just, de- if each state is, is decentralized and you're just dealing with several small countries that border each other. Yeah. 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 But I mean, like you can't, you can't have a, which would like, almost be a better situation the, in my opinion, because every state in India yeah. has its own language and culture. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah no, totally. Uh, you might just want to break all that up. I mean, solve I mean, a lot of problems. That's, yeah. that, I mean, that's true in a lot of places. Yeah, uh, that is true. I mean, that there was true. the big thing in Spain with the uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the 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 Cat- Cat- Catalonians. Catalonians. Yeah, the uh, Catalans. The, like you know, basically they were. And like I, I place, started reading about like writing friend, forever. I was my, in my, a... friend, my, my friend Mike's living there. Yeah. Uh, so like he was telling me about it. like I never knew anything really about this, but so I started like reading all the history of it, and it's like. Yeah, Catalonia has basically been like suppressed by the ruling regime in Spain for like the last like six hundred years. Yeah, I uh, I was in a uh, riot in Madrid <laughs> when I was there, like a big ass riot. Um, and, like people were just marching around. I was like, "What are we marching for? <laughs> this is not a chant. What are we marching for?" Like I just want to know. And like they told me, I was like, "Man, it sucks balls here." Uh, like on a governmental scale, like obviously the people are super nice, but it's just like what, 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 what? What's going on here? Then, then uh, like it was cool to like you know show support and everything, but then all of a sudden. Uh, it went too far. People were, like, flipping over cars and, and still like, I got my boy! I'm gonna leave! I don't okay. want to get shot by Spanish police. I already fled Barcelona because there was a warrant out for my arrest. I don't want one in Madrid, too. I'm just gonna see you guys later. It's like, uh, as far as I heard, like, there hadn't been any, like, really violent uh, protests. But, like, you know, they, they'd they had, like, like it's weird how it's set up. Because, like, Catalonia is basically, it's supposed to operate as an independent uh region of Spain but they're still technically under the monarch monarch I don't, I don't know prime minister I'm not sure I'm not yeah. up on my socioeconomic and Spanish like, and, the, and the big thing is like the, the Catalonians complain about is that like Catalonia itself is a fairly wealthy region and has like a lot of like businesses there but it's like businesses they started <laughs> oh yeah uh, yeah yeah and they pay a higher tax rate than a lot of other areas of Spain because they bring in, they just, they make more money there. Uh, but they're saying that they don't get the representation in government then. So basically it's just the whole like, you know, taxation for that representation thing. So they're paying more in taxes than right. someone in like Barcelona, but then they don't get the same level of representation in the national government. Uh, and that's why they want to like, basically, make, they don't want complete, they didn't want to completely like secede from Spain. But the big issue primarily was, like, economic stuff. Ah, uh, okay. And it's just been going on forever, and then now they had, like, a, you know, finally voting a referendum to actually secede from Spain, essentially. Uh, well, they got in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically the president or, like, prime minister of Spain was, like, saying, like, you know, it's, like, an illegal vote and had sent out, like, military forces to, like, basically, like... Quell the rebellion! Like, confiscate the actual, like, ballot boxes. Uh... And we're, like, you know, preventing people, like, essentially, like, intimidating people, like, to prevent them from, like, goes right. running. Democracy uh, is only valuable when it, when everyone has the opinion you want them to have. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it matters most. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing that made me uncomfortable about, uh, about India. Lots of existential crises I'm still working through. But, yeah, so I was, like, wa- uh, waiting to leave India forever, because I eventually came back from Nepal because my flight was leaving from India. Um, and I, I wanted some tea. So I went to this shanty and I got some tea and I drank my tea. It's like a thimble, like a paper thimble. And I was like, well, now I got to find some place to put this paper cup, this tiny paper cup. And uh, I wandered around for ages carrying this tiny paper cup until I finally found a trash can. (laughs) And then I'm like standing over the trash can holding this tiny paper cup, just like looking around. And I had this like, like... Like, for, like, two seconds, I had, like, an infinity's worth of, of like, time-frozen breakdown. Because I was like, this does not matter. Like, I was looking around, <laughs> and just the piles of garbage yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And, like, half of it's on fire, and there's, like, people begging and dying in the streets, and the air's not breathable. And I was like, me throwing this tiny cup in the trash can does nothing. 
Like, <laughs> this doesn't matter. Like, like, whether it goes in the trash like, or yes, goes on the if, ground. If I throw it in the street, yes, I'm technically contributing to the problem, but it's such an infinitesimal... Yeah, I was like, amount. I was like, this, <laughs> this doesn't matter, and like that's, and the thing that made it worse was like, if I throw it in the trash, the cleaning staff is just going to come and empty the they're, trash they're can just, on the just street, dump the trash on the ground. That's what they do, there. like on the train, like everyone just drops all their shit on the train, like in a pile, and then like every couple of hours, like a janitor will come and sweep it all up and then just brush it out the door, like wherever you happen to be, they just brush it. There's just garbage everywhere. I was like, this doesn't matter, nothing matters, but I put it in the trash can anyway. Because I was like, maybe, like, this doesn't matter, but maybe it will lead to something that matters. Like, significant things are built from insignificant things. Yeah. Like, both metaphorically and literally. So I was like, this could be something. Like, when like when everyone's like, how do you get such le- an amazing personality? Like, I, sh- I should just be like, waiting in lines and throwing my garbage away. If you want to look like this, if you want to look like this, you got to wait in line and you got to throw your garbage away. That's how you look like this. Yeah, throw your garbage away in the proper yes. receptacle. Yeah, that is why nobody here looks like this, because you do not wait in lines and throw your trash away. But if you did, uh, what do you think of this? Keep at it. It takes a while, though. Be steadfast. Another thing who do not look like you is because they wait in line too much. <laughs> yeah, they throw away too much. That's garbage. Too much, my friend. Like, yeah, you want to get even bigger than this? You just don't even make garbage. Stop stop making it. <laughs> Everything organic. Everything's organic. You don't even make garbage. You just be huge. I'm not there yet, but I'm trying. But, yeah, so that uh, still dealing with the consequences of that. And then... Uh, yeah, just one more quick anecdote. We're coming out of this temple. This kid had the, the currency, the East India Trading Company currency. And I was like, yeah, I want this. So I started bartering with him. I was like, yeah, how much for just one? Just give me one coin. And we're just going back and forth. And uh, I got him like, I got him down to like one-sixth or like one-eighth of what he wanted. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'll take it. So I bought it. And then George swoops in and he's like, oh, yeah, I wanted his price. Like, oh, you bastard. Like, you <laughs> just take my hard work. Because he's like, yeah, I can't, I can't do it on my own. I'm like, that's fine. So he gets one. And then uh, then the kid runs up to me, like, a little bit later after I walk away. He's like, hey, I found this other coin that is the same kind as the one you just bought. But it's way better. And I was like, I was like, hmm, let me see here. And I was like, oh, it is way better. Like, this is a, condition. I was like, this is a way better coin. He's like, you should buy this one, too. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to buy two of the same coin. I was like, how about a trade? And he's like, no, I'm not going to trade you for a shitty coin like for my good coin and so i was Robert, i trade you back the shitty one and then yeah. i'll add a little bit extra yeah on i was like i was like yeah what about this he's like I, I don't know and uh so i bought i was like well i'm not i'm not gonna do that but i'll buy a couple of other a couple of other coins from you at the old rate and uh he's like all right so i buy a couple of these older coins and he comes back he's like how about how about this coin though it's like the best. I was like, that is the best coin. And I was like, well, I was, uh, I was like, you are right about that. That is the best one. He's like, did you buy this one too? I was like, no, nah, I already bought three. And uh, he's like, how about, how about you just buy this one though? And I was like, how about I trade you for this one? And he's like, no, no, I don't, I don't want your your garbage coins for my awesome coin. And I was like, you know what? That's fair. Let me inspect it. And he's like, all right. So he handed me the coin, and I had another coin in my hand. And I was just flipping them around real fast. And I was like, oh, no, it doesn't look very good. Here you go. I gave him the shitty coin. It's like the good one. I'm like, take that, kid. <laughs> You're dealing with a pro, asshole. me. <laughs> but it was mutually beneficial because, like, he can't use a currency. I already bought several coins from him. George bought a coin from him. Like, he made money. He came out on yeah. top. I got what I wanted. He got what he wanted. We both got to use our skills. Everyone, he's got won. these coins that are basically worthless. Yeah, yeah, to him anyway. <laughs> Do you yeah. have one? Because I would like. To I don't know if I have one on me. Uh, I've got. Oh, you know what? They're they're back at my place. Actually, I don't have one. I have. Uh, I have this completely unrelated Indian rupee. Oh, let me see. This is ten rupees. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's all right. It's it looks bad. like Pokemon money. It does look like Pokemon <laughs> money. That's ten Pokebucks. I don't know how much Pokeballs are, but I think there are several hundred, aren't they? It's been a while since I played a game. But. I think it's like 200 for a standard Pokeball. Yeah, and it's just not going to work anyway. So you, cool. you need to buy them in like groups of 50 if you're going to catch anything. True. So, so I remember cool. my, uh, my, my friend from India when, yeah, he, when he graduated. It's great, though. Uh, when he like graduated high school, like he got these elaborate, like, I don't want to call them other than like they look like giant award ribbons yeah but it's all money <laughs> what 
it <laughs> that it's it's like Indian like like uh, the rupee like paper right. currency, but it's all like elaborately folded and it's just like tons and tons and tons of these bills. Right. But it's like a big like you know two three feet long and like you know foot wide. That's pretty cool. Of just a bunch of like folded money all like held together around this thing. That's and awesome. apparently that's oh, some kind of a USC tradition thing. Ten rupee coin. Yeah, I wish I would have I wish I would have brought some props. I got some cool <laughs> stuff. I got I got some swag from India. I didn't bring anything. Because like no one can see it, so I didn't think to bring it's like, all right, uh, describe what you're holding here. Although it's weird because like I know a lot coin. of countries yeah. do this thing where they they'll have like the two different metals in the coin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh yeah, I don't know if that's to curb counterfeit I money. I, I don't know. Um, but I've seen that like a lot of different countries use that same thing where they'll have like a... The inner ring is like, you know, like a silver metal. Then like the outer ring is like a bronze or something. Let's see. What else did we get? Oh, yeah. I uh, went to the Lotus Temple when I was in Delhi, which is... Uh, it's, it's a temple for all religions, but it is itself representative of its own religion called the it's like Baha'i or something like that oh Baha'i yes yeah. have you heard of it my sister follows the Baha'i religion yeah pretty cool stuff yeah I was reading reading on they, it they like, have a temple here they have a temple in Indianapolis I had no idea weird they're uh they're very uh progressive progressive kind of kind of hippie <laughs> yeah they're all about like science and progress and critical thinking mm-hmm. um and I'm I'm an I'm an anti-religion kind of guy but if you gotta pick one I guess one that favors science and critical thinking is probably yeah. the best one um, and also, it favors like a, like a universal language and uh, like peace. Yeah, you know, like yeah, they're they're very much about like unification and peace. Yeah, and just being like open to all yeah. people. Yeah, that's the thing. Not <laughs> abandoning previous cultures, but like accepting whatevs. Mm-hmm. So I can I can I can get behind that. But yeah, so that is uh, that's basically India in a nutshell. And then I escaped and went to Nepal. So we will talk about that on the next episode. Do you have any uh, any follow up questions? We covered a lot. We did. Uh, <laughs> we did cover a lot. Go say uh, like it, it's the stuff you told me didn't really surprise me, right? Uh, yeah, like anyone the, like, who's who's <laughs> vaguely familiar with India is like that sounds like what I'd what I'd imagined. Oh, but but Delhi, right? Delhi's actually the most populous city, mm. and it is supposed to have the highest pollution. And uh, all this stuff, and it was just nowhere near as bad as Calcutta. Like I was very surprised. So uh, that would be my advice if anyone's going to travel around all of India, go to Calcutta first, because everything else will be better. Everything else will be way better. <laughs> like if you go to a nice place in India, but you have super high standards, that nice place in India might not meet your too high standards, and then anywhere else you go in India is going to be progressively worse. So like. Set your bar super low, go to Calcutta, and then everywhere else is going to look like puppies and rainbows. Like, that's my advice. But uh, any, anything else to add? Final closing remarks? Anyone? Um, no style. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a, like uh, like anime outro? Like, yeah. No style. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, is that yeah, is that like a is that like our Hitler salute? Was yeah. that the joke? Is that like a Zeke yeah. Heil? Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Nash oh, style. I didn't even it like that. Nash wow. style. Because <laughs> your hand kind of kind of did that thing. We'll we'll get we'll get that to catch on. We'll get that to catch on. Nash style. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, this has been the national pastime. Talk to you next time. Panash. Nash out. Nash. Whoa.